Talking with Topher is sponsored by SlowdownClothing.BigCartel.com, New Hampshire Vape Gallery, and NaturalBossNH.com. More on that later. Let's get into episode 118. Add it again. <laughs> What is happening, TWT fans? It is so good to be back on this July 7th, 2022. And what is going on with all of you? I hope everybody out there had a great 4th of July. Um, You know, I hope everything's doing well. Swim safely. Don't drink and dive, all right? Don't do that. Uh, It's pretty unsafe. It's a good way to crack open a dome, you know what I'm saying? Um... You know, I just want to start off the way I always do, by thanking all of you, all my new subscribers, all my subscribers in general. Thank you so much. It means everything to me, and I just can't not tell you every week. It, it, it's absolutely amazing. So thank you so much. Um, I greatly appreciate it. And if you are new to the podcast, that's right, you stopping by, you just checking it out, maybe you're just listening Give a review, hit that subscribe button, set those alarms if you want to know when all the new episodes upload, and share, rate, and review the podcast. It pushes it out into the algae rhythm, and it, it just it gets it out to a bigger audience, but I need your help to do that, so go ahead and do all of those things, but if you're going to do one thing for me, just hit the subscribe button, all right? Hit that subscribe button, smash it, lick it, whatever you want to do, step on it. But just be clicking that because it's free for you and it means everything to me. All right. I appreciate all of you always. Uh, If you want to follow me, I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. Again, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. I'm on there every week, almost all week. You know, just playing around with this thing, using it for a lot of advertising. But if you want to go give a follow, uh, I would appreciate that as well. Again, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. Uh, And then, of course, if you want to get more involved with the podcast, maybe you or somebody you know has that story that needs to be heard, T-A-L-K-I-N with Topher at gmail.com. That's talking with Topher at gmail.com. Send your video, your voice, uh, an actual email. But if you do all that, put slow down in the subject line. That's going to give you the opportunity to get some free slow down merch. All right. It's super exciting to get involved with the podcast in the first place. But you're going to get some free merch out of it. You'll maybe get your story out there or whatever. But T-A-L-K-I-N with Topher <coughs> at gmail.com. That's the official email of the podcast. So go ahead and send those emails. I'll be looking forward to them. Um, And now with all of that out of the way, I have got an amazing podcast for all of you. Yes, my guest, Deborah Lebel. Uh, It was just amazing. She's an amazing person, uh, you know, going through life struggles and coming out on the other side a stronger person. Um, it's just incredible. This, this is the story that I want to hear from everybody because there's not anybody at any level in this life that's not struggling, but it's what you do with that struggle. It's how you get through the struggle. It's how you come out on the other side. Did you just give up and throw it all away? Or did you plow through and break through whatever was in your way? And come out on that other side a stronger, better person. Well, that's what Deborah did. And that's why I had to have her on my podcast. Because it's absolutely amazing. Um, We talked for quite some time. And I'm just so excited to share this with all of you. So instead of me rambling on and on and on, let's get into today's podcast with my guest, Debra Lebel. All right. What's happening, everybody? I hope everybody's having a great Thursday out there. I am here with my guest, Debra Lebel. 
Got it. All right. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. And uh, do you did you want to promote anything? Do you uh, have anything uh, going on? Um, no, I don't have any sponsorships or anything, but I want to give a plug to my barbell club, Odyssey Barbell Club in Salem, New Hampshire. Used to be in Methuen. They just moved like a year ago. Oh, okay. Amazing place. Uh, powerlifting, Olympic weightlifting, bodybuilding, general fitness, whatever it is. It's an amazing uh, facility and really awesome community. The community oh. is what did it for me. Oh, great, great. Yeah. Well, that's one of the best parts of uh, jujitsu and everything oh, yeah. else. The communities are so Absolutely. important. Yeah, you got to have a good one. Um, I'll make sure all those links and descriptions are in sure. the uh, below the video. Um, so we'll take care of that. So if anybody's interested, just go to the description uh, below the video and click the links. All right, or check it out there. All the information will be down there. Um, so uh, where where we met to start off with a little bit of rapport, uh, was PMA. Yeah, right? and Plastow. And Plastow. Yes. Yeah, 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 with Rick. Oh, my gosh. It was two years ago. Mm -hmm. I had already been training Muay Thai there. We Think try to just keep this about a fist of fist away, if you can. Yeah, I remember meeting you there. It was a year ago. It was uh, June of 2020. So I had been training Muay Thai at PMA and Plastow. Right. And everything shut down for COVID. Okay. And I had been telling Sensei Rick, I said, I want to do jujitsu i want to start but it, i need to get over some stuff at work then everything shut down right so then you got when to it reopened i started with my white belt and uh, i met you and so many amazing people but i remember you would only come one day a week i didn't know that you went to dairy too yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Der dairy dairy was my is my school yeah. where where i go but I, w I would go to rick once a week and it was funny because uh even to this day that class doesn't exist. Which class? Ricks. What do you like, mean? Like on 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 the record? Oh, okay. It doesn't it doesn't count. But you love training there. Oh, absolutely, a hundred percent. That's the important part. I, I find it to be fun. It's like yeah. I know I'm doing three classes a week. Yeah. But according to my card, I'm only doing That's two. That's okay, because you're not chasing stripes. <laughs> no. No way. No, 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 no. <laughs> I do have uh, future hopes for brown belt one day. Of but course, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see you there. <laughs> I remember when you had your blue belt. Oh, that's very true, isn't it? Mm hmm God. And then you came in with that shiny new stiff purple belt one day. Yes. 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 It is a great feeling when you uh, when you get promoted. It really oh is. Oh, my gosh. Well, I have my blue belt now. Yes. No, no stripes. Because, like, very shortly after I was promoted to blue belt in, I think it was January of this year, then I took a break to focus on powerlifting right. for a while. But don't tell anyone. Okay. On Mon By the time this airs, I'll already be there. But on Monday, I'm going back to jujitsu. No, you're not. Yes, Are I you? am. You heard it here. Monday oh, night. I am so pumped. That's Monday great. Monday night, Tuesday morning, Thursday morning. I'll see you there. Oh, all right. No, that's awesome. Um, but I miss it so much. Oh, I I don't doubt it. Yeah. I mean, you the you friends. were getting good at it, uh, and I wouldn't say I was getting good at it, but I was getting really good at enjoying it. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. I felt like some of your moves were pretty good. You weren't okay. doing horrible. Oh, I wasn't doing horrible. No. But uh, you know what? I personally want to be the best at everything, and okay. I'm very frustrated that I'm not. Okay, well. And you know there's only one way. To keep going. You have to keep going in order to get better. Yeah. Uh, this, that's what <laughs> but it then, is. But then again, I feel like I'm not very good at You're it excellent. either. You're excellent. What are you, you know what about? I mean? Uh, no, I guess so. I'm, I'm not excellent. Ex per most excellent. Most excellent? Yeah. No. From my perspective, <laughs> I think you're most excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but you had, uh, I had, I had sent you uh, a thing uh, through text message, and I was asking you if there was anything you wanted to touch on, and I found oh, yeah. that you uh, used, uh, uh, like, you, you said there was dark times oh, in yeah. your life, yeah. um, which I believe we all go through yeah. some really dark times. I know I spent a lot of time in the dark, so, um, and, and, and. You use sports yes. to get through your dark times, which I found very interesting because yeah. nobody I really know uh, has ever gone down the path of using sports to get over dark times. So yeah. I kind of wanted to uh, unpack that a little bit yeah. and hear what 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 was going on in those times. How sure. did sports? Well, first of all, I've always been um, I've always been very athletic, and I'm not saying I'm a great athlete. Don't no. <laughs> But I've always been very athletic. I always want to be doing sports. I want to be competing in sports. Um, and so I've been lifting for years, strength training. 
Um, and then powerlifting more recently. I was doing Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu I started. I went through a very, very rough time in 2020. Um, my family broke up, basically. Like okay. My husband and I separated. We have two little kids. And on top of that, it was uh, pandemic time. We all remember how just messed up it was in 2020, yep. early 2020. Really rough time. And I mean... I would just like lay around and stare at the ceiling or I would just go like face down and lay in the grass in my yard and be like, Ugh. but, um, I said, okay, I gotta, I gotta do something for myself. So things like lifting weights, going to the gym, uh, going to jujitsu and Muay Thai jujitsu, especially there's something really special about jujitsu, but, but lifting as well gave me something that I could focus on and commit to, Okay. to get me through and make me feel like. I had something to look forward to, that I had something that was important to me, that I had a very strong community wherever I was going, whether it's the gym, the mats, whatever, and um, it got me through. And, you know, I compete in powerlifting now, and I have done some jiu-jitsu tournaments in the past, and really... I'm not doing those things because I'm going to be the best. I want to medal in everything or anything like that. Um it's really because I have to have something coming up on the calendar that makes me focus on it, keep me on the straight and narrow so that I'm not drinking too much, you know, smoking too much, laying around in the dark doing nothing. I need to get out there and just do things. So, like, you know, I don't care what is going on in my life. If it's jujitsu day, we're getting up and we're going to jujitsu. Okay. No questions asked. Nothing is more, well, my kids are more important, but. Understood. <laughs> once yeah. the kids are taken care of, nothing is more important to me. Nothing is going to stand between me and going to go train, whether it's lifting, jujitsu, whatever. Oh, wow. And that's what got me through. And then I just like, I've got friends who told me, they said, Deborah, you've been going through so much the past few years and you just seem to take it all in stride. And I'm like, cause the most important thing to me is just keep driving towards that goal. You know, I got a powerlifting meet coming up or I'm trying to get my blue belt in jujitsu and you just keep going. And the other stuff seems to just kind of fall away while your sport lifts you up. Yeah. All right. You know? That's, 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 that's pretty incredible. Because I'll tell you, when I was in dark times, I was not using sports to, uh, <laughs> hi, hi, Archer. I was not hi, using puppy. sports to uh, get rid of that pain. Yeah. Um, okay. This we is, got two dogs in here. They yes, want to be on the mic. Yes, we do. And hey, guys. Hey. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are doing up here, but you're distracting me. <laughs> uh, do whatever you want. You have my permission. Uh, but so <laughs> damn dogs. Um, but yeah, so, so you use this time, right? So, uh, but back in the day, um, cause you had mentioned that you went through a divorce and, uh, what I've learned so far, uh, from talking to some people is that people used to look at divorce as, uh, this, that this thing that can't happen. Mm -hmm. Right. And you have uh, so you want to stay together because of the kids is yeah. the way that they used to say it. Um, but it seems like today that's different where they almost think that it would be better if the parents are unhappy to split up and then give the children or child uh, two happy households and still instead of one miserable one. Yes. And, and <laughs> um, so when when this is all happening. Um, and, and, and you're, you're going through all of this besides, you know, uh, jujitsu and your power lifting and everything else that you use to help you, uh, uh, get through it and support you in a way mm -hmm. like what, what other struggles did you go through to get where you are now? Because now, you know, you're, 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 I, I know that you're still, uh, having your children, uh, raised by the yep. dad yep. and you, right? So it's like and, a split thing. And the dog is still. Oh, 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 really? <laughs> the dog's pulling the headphones off my head. <laughs> All right, let's take a break from talking with Deborah so I can tell you about these amazing sponsors. Slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. That's slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. You're not sure how to spell it. It's right here at the bottom of the screen. Or you can click the link in the video description below. All right, go there, click that link. And before you check out, use promo code T-O-P-H-E-R to save 10% off your entire purchase. This website has everything you're looking for. Kid tees, adult tees, uh, leggings, swimsuits, 
Towels are sold out right now, but I told you to get them months ago. That's right. It's summer. It's here, and they're sold out of their beach towels. But hopefully the inventory will come back, or they just got new ones on the way because there is so much new stuff. Holy crap, new stuff. Look at all these new kid tees. Look at these new leggings. All these new skateboards, these hats. I mean, they came out with the hats a little bit ago, but they're still awesome. Everything's awesome. I love all of these high-quality products that you can get at a great price. And now by using the promo code T-O-P-H-E-R before you check out, you're going to save an additional 10% off that entire purchase, all right? So go to slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. That's right, slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. You're not sure how to spell it. It's right here at the bottom of the screen, or you can click the link in the description below the video. New Hampshire Vape Gallery is located at 180 Lafayette Road, Seabrook, New Hampshire, down the street from Home Depot and next to Smoke Rings, where we're open seven days a week from 1030 to 8 p.m. That's right. And if you want to give us a call, 603-814-4171. But we've got menthol e-juice. We've got menthol flavored e-juice. We've got flavors. Okay, we've got all the flavors in the disposables, the freebase, and your salt nick, or I like to call it high nicotine. Um, All the hemp products are growing. More and more are showing up on the shelf because why? Because I'm ordering them for all of you out there. Everything that I've advertised is available right now. So get down there. That's right. Get down to New Hampshire Vape Gallery today and come and see me, Topher. Or the guys at the gallery, and we're going to help you find what you're looking for. At New Hampshire Vape Gallery, located at 180 Lafayette Road, Seabrook, New Hampshire, down the street from Home Depot and next to Smoke Rings, where we are open seven days a week from 1030 to 8 p.m. Feel free to give us a call, 603-814-4171. And as always, I look forward to seeing you there naturalbossnh.com that's n-a-t-u-r-a-l-b-o-s-s-n-h.com i absolutely love this website and all of their organic products they are absolutely amazing they still have some rosy uh feeling rosy bath and body soak uh available for five dollars on sale right now while supplies last but don't forget their other five amazing products that are available all year round is the salve for repairing skin the lip and body balm for keeping that skin repaired your beard oil to keep your beard looking fresh and smelling fresh it's amazing the foot and body soak i mean let's just melt away all of our stressful days at this point in time. I mean, who isn't stressing out today and needs a little bit of relaxation and me time, right? So go to naturalbossnh.com and get that foot and body soak and melt those stressful days away and let's support a small business. That's where we need to be putting the money today because these big businesses are not doing anything for any of us, right? So... Support your small business. Buy all these products because why? They're affordable. Yes, they are all affordable. And you can only get them here at naturalbossnh.com. That's N-A-T-U-R-A-L-B-O-S-S-N-H.com. Buy one or all five of these products today. And now back to talking with Deborah. And this is why I have kitty gates yes, everywhere. I have pet gate in my house too. Oh my! All right, yeah, that started pulling on mine too. But yeah, so like I was, I was trying to uh, trying to ask you is, is you, you know, you're 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 both raising the the, the kids, yep. and and but you now have to do everything on your own, and and that in itself, along with COVID and all of that stuff, must have been a tremendous struggle for you. Oh, big time! Even today, even though. Even though everyone's back to school, back to camp, like we're living in a pretty much normal post-pandemic right. time, it's still really tough. I mean, it's, I don't know. It, you, I try to have it all. You got to give up on some things. My house is a disaster zone right now. Yeah, but you 
got a house on your own. I did. I did buy a house this past year on my own. That was, I, and I mean, the housing market's crazy. I thought, as a single parent, am I going to be able to buy a house? No. My house is a disaster right now. And I've got different family members babysitting my kids right now. And baseball. My you kids' baseball has been ruling our lives. I put 300 miles on my vehicle in the last 48 hours. Like, Oh, wow, yeah. Life is so crazy. But if you want to have it all, you can. Here's what I think for all parents. If you want to have it all, that means you've got to be late for everything. Even though I was early here today. you got to be late for everything. You gotta put a lot of miles on your car, and you're probably gonna take fewer showers than most people would take. Oh, okay, okay. But if you want to have a family, you want to have a career, you want to have hobbies, you want to have friends, you can do it. You're just gonna have to give up on things like having a clean house or saving money on gas. Yeah. Anyway, the other things that got me through these times, and I'll be honest, like I just kind of like kept pushing forward with it and tell it. I had to have some very difficult conversations with my kids, mostly my son. He's older. My daughter was only three when her dad and I broke up, but um, some really difficult conversations with my kids about what the expectation should be moving forward about mommy and daddy aren't together and we're not going to be together oh, anymore. Okay. And my son still to this day wants us to get back together. Uh, it seems like that's kind of the case for a lot of divorced uh, parents or yeah. families and stuff like that. Like the kids always kind of have a hope of yeah. the parents getting back together. But yeah. if it's not meant to be, it's just not meant it, to be. It was not going to work out. And I'll tell you, we were miserable, both of us. There was fight. My kids didn't see it, but there was fighting and there was, oh, it was. Well, it that's was the other. Really, it was a really tough life to endure. But I yeah. was before we broke up. I was like, I gotta. I don't know what to do. I like my family life, but this marriage and this marriage thing in general is probably not for me. And then it just kind of ended with a bang. I won't talk about the circumstances. But oh no, it, of course not. It was yeah. very abrupt when we separated and divorced. Yeah, very abrupt. So the kids were like, "Wait, what happened?" <laughs> Right, because they didn't see any of the details. They yeah. didn't see the fighting. No. But they're not supposed to. They're like, we were in Florida visiting our grandparents, and then next thing I know, Daddy doesn't live here anymore. And that's why you were visiting <laughs> them in Florida. Yeah, kind of. Kind I think of. it was a COVID thing, but uh, oh, it yeah. was really tough. And I, I spent a lot of time crying, Oh, and mostly over, like, my kids. Okay. And how my kids felt. How they felt, how what yeah. this was doing to them, yeah. and yeah, of so, course. So, you know, that's one reason why the gym became a safe haven for me. Um, my powerlifting coach, my strength coach, he and I are very close. We've been, I've been training with him like since my son was one. So like what, more what, than six years now. Was that the gentleman in the picture with the yeah, glasses on? That's, that's okay. That's Chuck. Chuck is my bedrock in life. Absolutely. So I've known Chuck a long time. In fact, my ex-husband used to train with him too. Um, but um, he was there for me. He was like the first person I told Brian and I broke up and he's like, the gym's reopening. Like, remember when gyms were all shut down? Oh, that was ridiculous. Well, one you've of got it. You have a home gym things. now, but, um, yeah, in uh, yeah. 2020, July of 2020, the gyms reopened. He said, we open on Monday. Come see me. Oh, wow. Great. And Great. I was there. We trained. And I remember, you know, my friend Ashley Davies. You know Ashley. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been, I've been talking to yeah, her as well. Ash she did some TV stuff, and yeah. she's been doing a whole bunch of yeah. stuff. And, yeah, yeah, she's so killing it Ashley, right now. Ashley and Chuck knew each other, um, and Ashley said something to Chuck like, Deborah seems like she's really solid, like self-sufficient in lifting. What, why are you guys lifting together three days a week? And Chuck said, Deborah needs me right now. And that, like, I'm going to tear up just thinking, he said that to my good friend. Deborah mm. needs me right now, and he was right. Yeah. I needed something to keep me on the straight and narrow instead of just falling apart. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then uh, when Chuck and I, we were lift, like very committed, he said, let's get your strength back up. Because, you know, when the gyms were closed, like, I hadn't touched a barbell in months. Okay. And I wasn't, I was still, like, a pretty novice lifter when the gym shut down. But he's like, all right, let's just start from, start from the bottom. Just build it up. Build it up, build it up, build it up. And then after a while, I was like, can we do a powerlifting meet? And that, I think that uh. we registered for that. We focused on that. Like, you can always strength train no matter what, and not everyone competes, and there are people who don't compete who are a million times stronger than I am, but, you know, that was, like, for me, that was something that I could latch on to and say, this is what I want to do. We've got a goal. Let's get in there and do it. And it is, it's not just having a goal. It's really challenging the day of the meet. It's not, it's not anything like anyone might think it's like. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. Wow. But, um, 
it was good. And then as soon as I did it, I was like, let's do that again. And it just, and so I just did my third meet yesterday. So okay. Just, just keep going. Don't stop. Just keep going. And, and, and when you have a meet, mm-hmm. uh, how many, how, like, how many do you do a year? Um, Is there? Some people do one or two. Some do two or three. You wouldn't do more than three because you need so many months to prepare for it. Oh, okay. Because you can't always be maxing out. Like, you can't just always be at the top of your strength. You'll get hurt. You'll... Uh, Terrible things can happen. You will lose your strength, actually, if you try to max out all the time because your body yeah. gets fried. But Okay. So what I'm going to ask a silly question because no, I don't know no anything about powerlifting. Uh, okay. What is a PR? A PR is a personal record, just like in any oh, sport. Oh, so okay. PR, so a PR would be like I lifted more than I ever had before. Do you know what oh, I mean? Oh, okay. Yeah. And then, and then what? so whatever you m- – Whatever that record is, that's your max. For then, yeah. For then, mm-hmm. but you always try to go above the max when you're gonna so getting you, ready for to compete. Yeah, so I always I describe it as you build it up and then you tear it down. You build it up, you tear it down. So you, like I said, you can't always be maxing. You gotta be. You gotta start at the bottom. You don't go back to zero, but okay. you're like, I gotta do. I gotta cut the weight down well below my max, and I gotta do volume. So just reps, 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 reps for months. And you, you change it up all the time, but you're slowly in the background building your strength, even though you're not working at your maximum level. Okay. You're doing submaximal repetitions for volume. Oh. So you're doing, you're on a program. The only way you're ever going to peak and get stronger is if you're on a program for progressive overload, where you're saying, I'm just going to slowly overload my body with uh, Interesting. training. You're, you're responding to it. You're adapting to a stimulus basically. Huh. So then you get up there and you want to, you got to train your, if you're going to compete, you got to train your timing so that you're g- at your very strongest the day of the meet. So you're going to, you're probably going to PR in the gym training before you get to the meet. And then you're going to PR again at the meet. If you, if you play your cards, right. It's a, it's tricky. Interesting. <laughs> it's tricky, but you can do it. So I you did gotta, it. You got to build yourself up to this point and then you got to kind of hold it. Until you yeah. do the meet. Yeah, you get one week rest before the meet. And your body, even though you're not lifting for that one week, your body weirdly gets stronger. I s- really? Yeah. But if you went, if you took two weeks off before the meet. You would decline. Totally. Oh, weird. So why, I wonder why the body holds that for a week. Um, your body's saying, you trained your body to hold on to that strength and that muscle mass and that capacity or an aptitude to do that for a week because because of the way you trained to get it there. It will not last more than a week. Like, oh. I'm still, you would still be strong, but right. you wouldn't be at your tippy top. Mass. Huh. And then if you went two weeks, your body would say, that's when your central nervous system says, whoa, I'm holding on to a lot of muscle mass. We're not using this. I'm going to let it go. Oh, really? Yes. Your body wants to, because it takes a lot of calories to maintain muscle mass. Oh, okay. But even if you're eating a lot of calories and not working those muscles and training that strength, your body will say, this is a liability for me to hold on to all this mass. We're going to change. We're going to let that mass go. And any extra calories we're getting, we're going to store as fat. Oh, really? Delicate Interesting. Balance. Yeah. Seems it's very delicate. Yeah. So, because like I, w- I want to gain more mass, I want to get bigger muscles and stuff like that. But that's you my p- force feed yourself. And that's lift my problem. Like a mofo. Well, that's why I when I when I see what you're doing, I'm like, I just I I I, I can't force feed myself. It's, I have a problem with doing that. It's terrible. That's what everybody tells me. They're like, you need four thousand calories a day, and I'm like. I can't there do ways, that. There are ways to do it. But yeah. You're am- Oops. You're, you're good. Right. I'm just killing everything. I'm a hand talker. Sorry. No, no, no. You're fine. This liquid death, which is delicious, by the way, is going to stay <laughs> right over here. First, the dogs come in and take the cords. <laughs> I knock over the liquid death. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, you're a meat and potatoes guy, right? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 100%. So, it's not like you're eating salads all day. No. Nope. You're, you're halfway there. Okay. You drink. Do you drink milk? I mean, uh, no. are you lactose intolerant? Yes. Okay, then don't do this. Some people, especially people of a slender build who just are having trouble gaining weight when they lift, drink a gallon of whole milk a day. But that's for, that, like, I would never do That's not okay. for me. Typically, guys who are slender can do that. I hope that keyboard's okay. 
Yeah, it should be fine as long as it doesn't <laughs> activate anything on this side. That's all I ever worry about. I'm like, is it going to start I'm doing sorry. things on and its own? The other things you could do, you could do, there's gainer proteins that are like 600 calories and 50 grams of protein a serving, stuff like that. But I don't, I don't do that stuff. Clearly, I'm not lacking for weight gain. I, by the way, I put on 20 pounds in the last year. Less than. Like, 20 pounds in the last year? I did year? 20 pounds in 10 months. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, this is the biggest I've been since I had my second kid. But I'm, oh, really? Yeah. I'm going on a cut uh, tomorrow. Diet starts Monday. How many times have you heard that? But I'm serious about it because I was force feeding myself to get... To, to where the, you are. Yes. But now you're going to reduce? Yeah. So here's the thing. you I don't want to be this big all the time. So there are weight, di- weight classes... Oh, interesting. And, like, you know, have you competed in jujitsu? Nope. You haven't? Just just the school? That's okay. Just That's a school, okay. inner school But, competition. you know, for like jujitsu uh, or MMA, kickboxing, powerlifting, you weigh in mm-hmm. before you compete because there's distinct advantages to being bigger right. in all of those sports. So in powerlifting, the tippy top of the division that I'm in is 165.3 pounds or 75 kilos. Okay. So yesterday I weighed in at 165 pounds on the nose. Oh, wow. Like I had three, three tenths of a pound to spare. Didn't want to go there because you've got to wear clothes. Too. Well, you don't have, you can wait <laughs> if you want to. I think that's why they hold up the towels for the fighters. We're like, you know yeah, we're, yes, you've seen it. Yeah. Where people are like, I need to take my underwear off and I need to exhale before I get on the scale. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. see all kinds of weird you stuff. Like they were, like, they were looking at a fighter recently and he was putting his feet to the edge of the scale or he was like on the scale, but the, his had, his, had his heels off and his toes lifted. Mm. So he... And then everybody's like, anything what is going on weight. here? Anything to make weight. Wow, yes. wow, okay. So anyway, I'm at the tippy top. If I want to get stronger, I one of the things that I'm going to do is put on more muscle mass. If I put on more muscle mass at this weight, I instantly go into the next weight class. And then that's like, I don't even know. It's a big range. It's probably like... Uh, I'm going to say like a 15 pound range. Oh, okay. So like, I'm not going to put on another 15 pounds from here. Right. You want to do is is go backwards. I want to trim the, I want to maintain as much muscle mass as I can, Mm -hmm. which is hopefully all of it. (laughs) Probably not going to happen. I mean, and take off as much fat as I can. Okay. Within reason. I'll do that for like two months. Probably my coach is cringing listening to this. (laughs) He wants me as big as possible all the time. He doesn't care. And I'm like, I have a life to live and clothes to fit into. (laughs) <laughs> so I will, I'm going to try to lean out as yep, much yep. fat as I can so okay. that when I start my next cycle of training that I can grow up from there. So again, build it up, tear it down, build it oh, up, tear it down. Wow. So when you, when you. I used to compete at 148 pounds. Okay. 150 pounds. Now I'm 165. Oh, interesting. Like I'll never go down to that weight again. That's You'll never go have. back down to the one. Okay. So when you cut. Not for, not for training and competing. Okay. But you when only you. only get bigger. When you cut this time and yeah. you get down to the 150, maybe would you compete again at the 165? Bingo. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna tear it down, lean it out, strengthen it up, and then you yeah. thicken up again yeah. to go compete at 165, yeah. and hopefully you're in better condition yes. than you are right now. Yeah, more muscle oh, mass. Wow. Yeah, I'm trying. That's, That's the goal. But I mean, like, I'm 39 years old. I can only do so much now. That's like, fair. You know. Yeah, our bodies give up. Yeah, they, I mean, they, I can still, I can still do it. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't really care about the body fat. Like, I use the shovel method for bulking. Some people are like very calculated about their macros and their micros. I'm like, I don't care. I just need to. I'm busy. Like, just give me food, and I'll go train, and I'll sleep. I, I think if I was to ever really get into it and start for, like, I would have to shovel it. I would have yeah. to not think about it because I think the yeah. more I think about it, that's what deters me. Yeah, I have a. Uh, issue with force feeding myself Uh, so i'm like my coach always says if you don't want to eat anymore then you are doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing oh really so when you get to that point where you're like i just can't even look at food it's like okay you did a good job today you ate you ate plenty yeah oh jesus christ that is wild it's crazy but you know it's it comes and goes you get used to it too but okay the person who's giving me the most flack about this is my mother my mother's old school, you know, she's a baby boomer. She's like, what are you doing to yourself? 
My mom doesn't think I'm muscular. She thinks I'm just... <laughs> oh, oh, well. And even yesterday when I came home laden with all of my medals from my powerlifting meet, she was like, that's wonderful. Are you going to keep doing this? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Huh? Thanks, Mom. I am going to keep doing it. Yeah, why wouldn't you? But I told I her, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose weight next week. I said, I'll probably lose 10 pounds in the next two months. And she was like, tell me how you do it. She's looking for a secret. Yeah, and I'm like, well, it's hard work, but it can be done. It's called a caloric deficit. But if you want to maintain your muscle while you do it, you got to be particular about what you eat, and you got to be doing total body workouts. Because, like I said, your body wants to let that muscle go if you're not using it. Oh, okay. So, so like, if you don't use it, you lose it with the muscle. Even if you're eating, even if you're active, if you're not training those muscles with weights in the gym, your body will... Okay, so you're not going to just, like, cut back on eating and kick your feet up and Mm-mm. have a good time. It's a different type of weight it's, training. It's, it's, so it's, a, it's another stringent exercises, specific eating this time so that yeah. you can allow the body to decrease weight but still yeah. keep muscle and yeah. or maybe increase a little bit of muscle. Uh, I doubt I'll increase muscle. So it's just going to keep it steady. Steady. Oh, so like, interesting. In okay, order, okay. In order to build muscle mass, whether you're a bodybuilder – a power lifter or just Joe Schmo with the gym, whatever. And I have mad respect for all three types of people, weightlifters too, the Olympic weightlifters. You want to build muscle, you have to eat more than you expend. So okay. a caloric surplus. Just like when you want to lose weight, everybody knows the only way to lose weight is through a caloric deficit. Caloric well, deficit. does everybody know that? I don't know. <laughs> if everybody knows that, we think we think people get that now, right? Yeah, we uh, we would hope that most people get it by now. Yeah. I mean, what, there's enough people yeah. out there talking about the it for only, sure. The only thing I don't want to do is lose all of the muscle that I worked hard to build. It's actually, people think I'm crazy when I say this. It is easier to lose weight than it is to gain weight if you're an athlete. Well, isn't that because... The good weight. The good weight. Right. Okay. Because you got you can't just eat. You have to eat and lift. And you okay. have to eat the right things and lift the right way. But to lose weight, if you just want to lose weight, period, don't eat. Right. You could lay on the couch and not eat and lose weight. If you want to keep your muscle mass and okay. lose fat, then you gotta you gotta get the workouts right with the diet. They 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 have to go together. You can't do it any other way. Oh man. Oh man. Well, I'm learning so much, and I'm doing I'm lear- everything wrong. I'm so learning that's so much. No, I'm not saying you're doing it wrong. No, no, this no. Is no I'm what just I, in my sport, what we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I want to get bigger, but there's literally nothing you've said that I'm doing. So that's okay. That's fine. <laughs> hey, you know, and there are people who do it differently. There are people who are I people that I really, really admire, but they have a different lifestyle and a different approach than mm-hmm. I have. They're very particular about their macros. Mm. And, like, there are people who get big and stay pretty lean at the same time. And I'm like, I don't know how they do it. Could, oh. could be steroids. I'm not. I mean, <laughs> hey, if, it, if it's there, why not use it? Uh, you know? I, I don't know. Because <laughs> uh, I don't know. Not saying I wouldn't. I'm just saying I don't. Right, right. Well, well I mean, if you're competing and they're testing you, then that's, that's, you shouldn't be doing it if they don't want it there. But I'm not against that that side of no. things at all. I think I'm it's not, actually. I'm not against it at all. I, I, personally, from what everything that I've learned and listened to and stuff like that, what what I what I've come to realize for myself is that I think it's actually a good thing when you're in recovery. Yeah, it's, because it's a it's great recovery. recovery. It's a great recovery tool because that's what it's designed to do is help you recover. Synthesize so protein. if you're not competing and you've already competed. I don't understand what the problem is with helping an athlete recover faster because if you don't recover and you go back in, now you risk injury. Yeah. And if we can avoid athletes getting injured and it just happens to be that substance, the steroids that would help you do it. I just don't, I think this, this, it's like looking at marijuana as a bad thing, you know, still it's not, we all realize that it's not, but people still look at steroids like this, evil dark thing that's really horrible and it's gonna shrink your balls and <laughs> how well, it will it, yes. it, it does all it does all <laughs> those things but usually it does them if you're doing them incorrectly there is there's ways to do certain things there's ways you can supplement certain things back into your body so that those things don't all happen you yeah. can uh maintain it you can work with it and you can 
Uh, you don't have to be on them all the time. There's not yeah, like roid rages and all this. I mean, I, I listened to uh, this guy, Mark, and he, uh, uh, you know, weightlifts at, at Zoo in California. Uh-huh. And, and he's, he's, he's always talking about his steroid use. And yeah, he some goes, people are very open about it. And he goes over so many different things about how he maintains everything and what he's adding in and, you know, doing and how he does his cycles and stuff. And when you do it like that, it makes so much more sense. And then you avoid all the, yes. all the uh, stereotypical side effects that we've been fed all of our lives to tell us that steroids are just an awful thing and anybody who does them just needs to be taken out of the sport and they're yeah. a disgrace to everybody. Yeah. And I think that look upon it is absolutely wrong and just so old now. Yeah. Well, you know, there are, um, like, in powerlifting, for example, there is a lot of drug use, a lot. I bet. And But, you know, people make choices what federation they want to lift in. There's USA Powerlifting, which is, like, the biggest drug-free powerlifting okay. federation. Um, and then there's others where they don't it, – that's all drug-tested in USA Powerlifting. Um, there are others where, like, some meets, some of their events, some of their competitions are drug-tested and some aren't, and you okay. can pick which one you want to go to. And then there are some that they just don't do drug-testing at all. And I'm not saying everyone there is on drugs, but right. it doesn't matter. Because they're not looking. They're not looking, and everybody knows that. So – one of the reasons I did the USA powerlifting meet yesterday is that it's drug tested because I mm-hmm. went to a meet last January where the woman who won best overall lifter was very, very clearly heavily what? drugged for a long time. <laughs> and I was like, I can't compete with that. Right. You know? Right. I can't. Yeah. It's she almost was, unfair. She was competing in the open and I wasn't in the open. I was in my uh, age group anyway. So it's like she and I weren't head to head, but like it just, if you were, you'd have trouble beating. I that. wouldn't. I you, wouldn't have been able to beat. Well, granted, I even if she weren't on steroids, I probably wouldn't have been able to beat her. She was amazing. But I mean, you just kind of choose. Right. It's. I only think steroids are a problem if you're hiding it in a drug tested right environment. I think where so most as well. of the people are trying to be natural or natty, as we call them, Natties. and uh, some people aren't. That makes it. That's unfair. Okay. So you can go the drug free route. You can go the don't ask, don't tell route. There's in between, and everyone's just gonna pick what they want to do. I don't think steroids are bad. I might in the future do them myself. I'm getting older, right? Yeah. And I want to keep going. Well, I, I I like all those things. Anything that helps you with recovery, um, I, I I I'm very into it. I may not be able to afford most of it today, but some of the like the uh, the the bloodletting. Oh, um, to I haven't heard about this. Tell me about blood yeah. You letting. take uh, they take your blood out mm-hmm. and then they put it in this machine that heats and spins it. Okay. And when it heats and spins the blood, uh, this yellow stuff is like a serum. Yeah, it comes out of the blood and it's on top. And that I don't know what it's specifically called, but they take that and then they inject it into your joints. And it, it what it did was is it it's the platelets mm-hmm. and the platelets are to help with inflammation. So uh, I believe uh, Professor Tim from PMA Derry just had his knees done. Yeah. He had a knee scraped, yep. and then they did the bloodletting mm. on his knee, <laughs> and they injected all those platelets back into his knee, mm-hmm. and within a day or so, his knee had no pain. Wow. Because it, it helps with the, it helps inflammation, it helps repair, yep. it does all that, and that is... The, like the step just before you get into stem cells yep. and then stem cells is its own entity, but also again, good for joints and stuff like that. Like uh, Ben Greenfield paid $40,000 to uh, do all these uh, stem cells and he, and he had it all injected up and down his spine. Wow. Every single joint in his entire body was done. I know and some people who could use that. Yeah. Like- my coach Chuck, his, <laughs> yeah, his spine is shot. A lot of us are though, but <laughs> that's because we're not supposed to be standing, oh, which is yeah. also well, very he interesting. He hurt himself doing stupid things lifting when he was young. So. Yeah, that that's the other thing. See, that's why I get worried about like lifting and stuff because I'm like, if I don't know exactly how to hold this or do this, and all I'm doing is looking into a mirror, I'm trying to pay attention to a video. Mm-hmm. I'm like. Uh, I don't want to put myself out of work yeah. because I'm trying to get more muscle. So yeah. I, that's why I said earlier when we were talking freely 
uh, before the mics heated up that I was like, I'm actually like afraid of that thing downstairs because I, I just know how to do the, the, the bench. You know, yeah. I press and I do little things. I know how to squat properly, but mm -hmm. I'm like, am I? I just have a bunch of questions, which that I'll. Lifting oh, is very technical. Yeah. See that, that. And like, I wouldn't even say that my deadlift is spot on yet. No, like there's still well, because there are different ways to deadlift and some it's not a lot of it depends on how you're built, your anthro, your anthropometry. Anthropometry? Like, yeah. So like, you know, do you have really long legs and a short torso? Do you have short arms oh, and I a see. wide chest? You know, things like that. Your make. The, exactly. It's how you're made. So like there are some body types that are very well suited for certain types of exercise, for d certain types of sports, things like that. And so some people are going to be really good at some lifts and not good at others. I have a body that I found out is quite good for squatting. Squat is my strongest lift. I'm not saying I can squat more than I can deadlift. I can't. But um, squatting, no problem whatsoever. Because my body type just seems to be good for that. It's good for but that. But then, like, I really, really, really struggle with bench press. And part of it is, look how long my arms are. Oh. The yeah. longer your arms are, the harder it is to bench press, you know? Really? Because you got to lock it out. Oh, wow. I did not know that. Yeah. It's hard. Now... Shouldn't you always be able to deadlift more than you can squat? Yes. Okay. It, yes. It, like yes, I was, I should. was thinking about that. I'm like, I've seen people deadlift like 600 pounds, oh, yeah, and yeah, I yeah, could yeah. never imagine somebody squatting 600 pounds. Well, people do squat. I, I know, pounds. but I, but they probably deadlift like so a thousand for, for raw, for raw powerlifting. So not using uh, supportive equipment. Okay. Yeah, yes, your deadlift would be bigger than your squat, but if you I don't know. My squat, my squat games gains come to me easily. Like a, my squat is my strongest lift because, like, from an execution perspective, like, it's just the same every time. Oh. Every time I squat, every weight, it's the same. My my coach is gonna see this and be like, she's lying. She's lying. I saw her in warm ups yesterday. Um, but <laughs> you know, it's basically, you know, I I feel most confident in my squat. My deadlift, I've like done things where I changed up my technique mm -hmm. between my last meet in January and the one I did the other day. And it did help me. It like helped me overcome a plateau, but I still don't think that I have it perfect. Okay. And my coach also told me, he's like, I don't, I don't like the way you're doing it now, but I'm satisfied with it. Oh, okay. I which see. Which hurt my feelings. Cause I felt like I had worked really hard to get there. Well, <laughs> But, um, you know, my, my deadlift, there's a lot of potential for my deadlift. Eventually, I'm going to, like, start to hit an upper limit on my squat, and the gains won't be as easy. But if I could figure out the technique and doing it exactly the way that's right for me and my body, then I could have a lot more gains. Oh, reason. interesting. So it's really about how you're built. And, like, some people are really strong on one lift and not on others. Oh. Eddie, Eddie Cohen, the goat of powerlifting, is his body is so perfectly made for deadlifting okay that name sounds very familiar was yeah. he was he on rogan yeah probably probably okay i have it i didn't listen to that one i should go back and find it yeah and he gets around yeah eddie cohen's on instagram he's always got great content okay. i mean like if you send eddie cohen a nice message on instagram he will probably reply to you like he's just the man of the people wow and also the greatest of all time now mm -hmm. do you uh do you do any like stretching or <laughs> any like uh like uh, do you do any type of stretching yoga? Uh, have you ever heard I of the knees to over toes guy? Yeah. Um, yes. And knees should go over toes. Absolutely. I don't know why somebody somewhere back in time said, don't let your knees go in front of your toes on a squat is absolutely wrong. And you will not win a powerlifting meet if you don't. <laughs> yeah. But, um, um, I used to do yoga on the regular and I loved it. That was a long time ago. And then, when I started lifting, I would always stretch after I lifted. Always. Oh, after, not after. before. Oh no, you do not want to. Mm -mm. So think about like a rubber band. Mm -hmm. Take a rubber band and put two rubber bands. One in the freezer, one in the microwave. Okay. Warm one up, let one freeze. Take that rubber band. Take the cold rubber band and try to stretch it out. Snaps. Yeah. Yep. The warm one. Ooh, it's going to be really long, right? And really, yeah, so really that's why I'm bendy. saying, shouldn't you stretch before you do things? No, because before you do things, your muscles are cold. So you could do dynamic stretching where you don't hold it. There's dynamic stretching and there's static stretching. Dynamic stretching is more of a warm-up, oh. like doing alternating lunges. 
Oh, okay. Is a static. But not uh, holding I'm sorry, it. Is a dynamic stretch. Yeah, don't hold the lunge. Don't hold the lunge. But just one foot, one foot. One oh, foot, oh, 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 almost. Qu- okay. That would be a dynamic stretch. You could do that before you lift. You don't want to do just static stretching. Because oh, you have too much play? No, oh, you will snap. If those muscles are cold because you haven't warmed up yet, you haven't gotten the blood and oxygen flowing through you, those muscles are cold. If you s- That's when you pull a muscle. Oh. Yeah. Really? So I'd say doing a dynamic warm-up would be a good thing to do. It, me, personally, you know how we, we warm up in uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, jiu-jitsu. Right. Moving, 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 moving. That's all you need. They never say, okay, stretch. So you should always leave your stretching for after? I would. Interesting. I okay. would. People would disagree with me. You can do dynamic stretching. Dynamic stretching to before, warm up. but static stretching after. After. Now, I used to be the person I would always, always, always have a really, really good stretching and maybe foam rolling st- session after I lifted. Um, and I would be. I would tell everybody, "You gotta stretch after you lift." Well, now I'm a single mom. <laughs> yep. I don't have as much time as I used to, and I do multiple sports, and I'm always like, I got to go, I got to go, I got to go. So I don't stretch after I lift as much anymore. Hmm. If something doesn't feel good, I'll, I'll, work, I'll work it out, I'll stretch it out. But I used to just do total body stretching after every workout, and now I don't do it anymore. If and you... my kicks in Muay Thai are not as high because of that. Oh, okay. Now yeah. what – so if you – get to that point where you can't do your stretches, you can't do certain things, uh, would you make time for, like, a cold shower, or do you do any type of ice baths or anything like that? I don't do that on my own, but what I do do is go to Dr. Paul Cameron at Cameron Chiropractic and Cryogenic. Oh, okay. Every single week. I love you, Dr. Paul. (laughs) Um, I let him fix any problems I might have or prevent them. That's really what it's about is preventing. So I do, I get a chiropractic adjustment and he also does soft tissue work, the best soft tissue work you've ever had. Okay. And I do go in the cryo freezer. Oh, he has a cryo freezer. Is that the one that stops at the neck? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's amazing. And a lot of people from PMA go there. There's a PMA team discount to go in the cryogenic sauna. Okay. I think. I think so that's the gentleman that Professor Tim has told yes, me about multiple Professor times. Professor Tim goes every week, yes. too. I mean, it's amazing. But, I mean, for anyone who's an athlete, whether he's, you know, he works with a lot of athletes, and he works on injury prevention. You, of course, yes, people go there with injuries. But of like, course. I, people can't believe it when I say, I have no injuries. And I'm like, well, I only do what my coach tells me to do, and he's not going to tell me to do anything that would get me hurt. And I go to Dr. Paul on the reg. So, wow. Uh, and you do that once a week, where you yes. live, no matter I, what's going so on. So I won't make time to stretch after I live. But you make time for But him. I will make time to go to Dr. Paul. See, I haven't been to a chiropractor in years. That's a, you don't, not everybody needs it. But, you know, I go hard, and I'm not getting any younger. So the I started going to him because I felt like I was starting to get hurt. Oh. And this was back in 2021. I have to say, I have a lot of injuries right now. I you got, do? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, I mean, jiu-jitsu beats people my, my, up. My lifting sh- doesn't... You don't get hurt lifting. You get hurt doing jiu Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. But no, there's a, there's a something pinched, and it's just burning. Oh. Uh, for right now, it's doing fine. Okay. But usually, like this morning, it was on fire. If it keeps and, coming up. Yeah. So um, the... Chiropractic adjustments are amazing. Any chiropractor could probably help you with something like that. I just happen to think that Dr. Paul Cameron is truly exceptional at his craft. Oh, okay. Cameron Chiropractic and Cryogenics is in Londonderry. Okay, yep. It's on, what, 102? I think it's on 102, yeah. Yeah, right at uh, exit 4 off 93. Everybody needs to go there. Tell them them Deb sent you. I definitely will because now I'm considering it because I've been taking ice cold showers. Mm -hmm. I was contemplating getting a a horse trough and filling that up with ice cold water. Poor thing, you you're You're really in pain. Well, I'm in pain, but I also am. I I love the iced water. I just I I hate that stuff. It's amazing. It does. It makes you feel like you've got. I take a shower. Uh, like it'll be warm while I'm soaping up and doing everything, but the when I'm rinsing off and getting out, cool. it is ice cold. Yep. And I sit there for Just two minutes. Yep. And I, every time I get out of the shower now, I'm more awake than when I took the oh, yeah. full hot shower and got out. I would almost be like sleepy. Yes. But you so take relaxing. that. You take that. You turn that water off. You go cold, 
And all of a sudden you get out of the shower and you're like, I'm awake. What? Yeah. what? And it's just a different feeling. And I'm like, I don't, I don't have a tub in yeah. this house. We have a yeah. three quarter stall. So yeah. you can only stand up, yeah. which is why I would want to get like a horse trough or I something see. and throw it outside I and throw you- ice in it. No, I thought I, you were just desperate for pain relief. No, no, okay. no. I just don't have a tub. Okay. We we miss it very much. We, I gotcha. we ever since we bought this house, we're like, are we ever gonna be able to rip out that bathroom and put it in a tub? Yeah. And it's just not on the table. Yeah. But uh, hey, there are plenty of houses that don't have tubs. Oh man. So I do. Um, I am very very fortunate. The house that I bought this year has a steam sauna. Shut up. And I didn't even know it when I made the offer on the house. It was like when we were doing the inspection, I was like, what's this little box do? It's in the shower in the master bath. And it's like a fully enclosed, like sliding door I shower. am so jealous. That's amazing. So you have the option to have the sauna. Steam sauna. And then you could get out into the cold shower. So it's all Ooh. right in there. So I turn off. And in fact, that's what I do. I turn off. I'll go to like, I'm comfortable hanging out at like 90, 95. I've gone mm-hmm. higher. But like. I'm comfortable hanging out there. It's pleasant without getting, like, really uncomfortable. Uh, if I want to be uncomfortable, I'll just go to jujitsu. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, and then the first thing I do is turn on tap cold. Mm. So it's basically as cold as my shower can get. Yeah. And I have a well, so it's, it's like Pretty cold. groundwater cold. Groundwater cold, yeah. Yeah, and at first I'm like, why am I doing this? And I'm like, this feels amazing. And if I turn the temperature up a little bit on yep. the, that cold shower, I'm like, it's too hot. Put it back down. Yeah, yeah. I've been doing the same thing. It's like I, I turn it up, and then I'm like, oh, man, it's just too hot. And it's, I turn it down, but not cold, cold. Still yeah. got a little bit of lukewarm water in yeah. there. But I'm like, why did I ever turn it up to the point where I was, like, almost boiling? Yeah, when you're, like, turning your skin red, being like, oh, it's so but, hot. But you have that. So going into the sauna mm-hmm. and, and, and doing that 90 to, I think you can go up to, like, 120, I've heard most yeah. people doing. Yeah. That's, like, the... The bloodletting I was talking oh, about. Oh, it is. Yeah, because where it warms the, it up. Where it warms it up, and then that happens inside of inside of you without spinning. Yeah, you exactly. Spin no, you sauna. don't have to spin in the sauna. So it does all of that for your joints and everything. And then when you get out and you shock it with the cold, that's another protein ah. that helps. So you really ah. got you've got a great re- you got a great recovery system, right? That's everything that I'm trying to do now yeah. by putting okay. a ice bath outside and then. We've talked about getting a sauna yes. that would actually fit in our basement. Yep. And it's just an electric one. Yeah. And you just the plug it in. Heat. Yeah, the dry yeah. heat instead yeah. of that uh the instead of the uh, yeah. steam. Yeah. But um I, I've that's what I've always wanted to do. Yeah. So to have that, that's an amazing I, uh, how lucky re- am I? That's pretty lucky. So like I wasn't you have the using best of both it. worlds right there. Yeah, I wasn't using it very much. And then lately I've been like, I just need to use this more. Like I would people like to come and visit me and use it. And anybody who wants to come to my house and use my sauna, I'm like, yeah, go for it. Let me get you a towel. You know, stay in as long as you want. I actually have a friend that was competing in a powerlifting meet, and he was trying to cut a lot of water weight. Oh, it's a great place to start. I was like, just lock yourself in that sauna. Yep. He's like, I'm getting bored in there. And I'm like, just keep going. Just keep and going. he did. He went, it, I, he dropped a lot of pounds. Uh, I don't know if you have it, but uh, there are Bluetooth speakers that you can put inside of your sauna that are made to take the heat. Oh. And then you can put your phone on yeah. and have it go to the Bluetooth speaker. Awesome. And then you don't have to keep your phone in the sauna because the f- sauna will destroy your phone. My but then you should be able to control destroyed. everything right from inside the okay. sauna. But they make specific special speakers to go inside of those so you don't have to ruin your phone. Because nice. a lot of people do the same thing. They're like, I could be listening to a book or a podcast or I could be med. Some people like to meditate. Other, like Ben Greenfield has one that you can stand up in. He brings kettlebells inside oh of it and starts working out wow. inside of the sauna. That's I've seen people do that in dry saunas. He, he's an you animal. You can't do though. it in the steam. You'll slip and fall. But Yeah, yeah, the dry sauna. I don't like the dry sauna. I no. feel like I'm just like... At a bus stop in the summer, and it's a really hot day. <laughs> and I'm so bored. When is that bus going to get here? <laughs> so the steam, I don't know. There's something about, like, the clouds of steam floating around that, like, entertain me. Well, it, it, I, <laughs> I've i always heard that the steam is a lot better. Really? Okay. Yeah, the steam is supposed to be better, but the dry heat is a lot easier for people to put in their houses. Because yeah. if you got a steam one... You got to have it where you have it. You have to have it in the bathroom. It's got to be ventilated. You got to be able to get the steam out because you don't want mold and mildew to grow. So 
having that set up the way that you have it is ideal. I'm lucky. But if you, yeah, it's pretty cool. That's a really great recovery system right there. Oh my God. I need to use it more. You're welcome to come anytime. Oh, fantastic. I'm going to get comments <laughs> we, on I'm going to get comments on YouTube being like, "Where what's we, your address? I'm coming over." <laughs> well, there's a place right on <laughs> South Willow Street that we go to specifically for the sauna. Oh, okay. Cuz there's not many places that uh yes, it is a dry one. Mm-hmm. So it does take a little bit longer for you to start sweating and stuff. I feel yeah. like by the time the time's almost up, it's like you just started sweating. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but if so. you wrap yourself in towels when you get out or go get in the hot shower or something after that, you'll just keep sweating. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I like it. Oh, if anybody is in the Merrimack Valley, the Andover YMCA has both a dry sauna and a steam room. Steam oh. room is in the aquatic center. and the YMCA, dry sauna, huh? Yeah, in Andover, Mass. <coughs> so, And then the dry sauna is, there's one in the men's locker room and one in the women's locker room. Huh, interesting. Now, we also talked... Uh, a little bit earlier, kind of sticking with this, yeah. the, 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 the power lifting there. You, yeah. you were saying how um, you're females uh, competing in a male-dominant oh, yeah. uh, uh, sport, yeah. which I feel like that's every sport, in Pro- a sense. Probably. In a, it, it, to an extent, I feel like it's pretty close to every sport that's it's basically male dominated. I mean, we just heard about the soccer players that uh, fought to get more or equal pay as the uh, uh, the male yep. uh, sport side of things. But you know, the biggest argument was, you know, if we don't have butts in the seats, then then how can we pay you? But I guess they got that all worked out. Okay. But so powerlifting is relatively, to me, newer to the female crowd yeah probably and I, i've definitely seen a lot more over the last three years of women power lifters uh, uh joining in but what what is that like um so like i've been to no let me be clear women only compete with women and men only compete with men in Correct. powerlifting meets i'm not competing with the men it's never it's never going to be a fair fight um but like training, going to the gym, like pretty much all the coaches are men, which is, I love my coach, but I've never even seen a female powerlifting coach. Okay. Maybe once at one meet I did. Um, and then like going to the gym, it's all the dudes and there you are picking up your smaller plates, you know, right, to right, do right. your training. No less important, but like there's a bunch of bro stuff going on in the gym, you know? Right. Um, but are they, are they, are they at least inclusive or they can, do you be. S- they they can all, be i don't know i i think they all have ulterior motives do you know what i mean uh, well yeah but that's gonna happen in every sport uh, that's gonna happen almost everywhere yeah i mean yeah i don't know so but uh jujitsu same thing you know at pma and plastow for like a good year or more i was the only female training in jujitsu there oh okay and judo right. too. i was doing judo for a while there are more women in muay thai and i was always asking sensei rick when are the women gonna come he's like they come and go they come and go you know they will come eventually and he i was like why don't women like jujitsu and he's like it's hard and i was like is it That's- really hard i was like it's you have to be comfortable with not wearing any makeup getting your hair really messy getting somebody else's sweat on you and whatnot, you know. Well, that's difficult for a lot of people. I will mm. say that when I started jujitsu, I never liked having bare feet. Oh, really? I did not enjoy being near or that close to another guy. <laughs> and it's not a homophobic thing. No, it was just a just, personal choice yes. thing. It was There was no reason. Unless it was like a friend of mine, I was giving him a hug. I was cool with that. But like, I was also afraid of crowds. I didn't like being in crowded places. Yep. And so I find to get over those hurdles was difficult. It was actually easier for me to get tapped a thousand times a day and deal with that. It it was actually harder just getting the sweat on you or when somebody was mounting you and then that sweat went in your eye or your mouth and I would kind of freak out when I was a white belt. I was like, yeah. oh, I don't want this in my... Now now I'm like, oh, it's nothing. It doesn't matter. Look it's just, at you overcoming it, your fears. But that's what it does. And yes. maybe that's what Rick meant by it's hard. But okay. people have to get over their own insecurities to get 
past Big time. to get to that next level. Big time. You know, I'm not afraid in a crowd anymore. I'm definitely not afraid to be around a bigger guy than me. I'm not. All of those fears have gone away. I find myself taking my shoes off a little bit more often than I used to. Yeah. So all of those things kind of got extinguished from doing jujitsu so much. And I, I really don't, I don't believe that he felt that women find it too hard to stay within the sport. Mm -hmm. I think they have too many of the things that you were just talking about that they deal with where yeah. they can't wear their makeup. They're not, they, their hair is a mess. You know, a what, mess. Uh, I know my wife being in particular about her nails. Yeah, you have to have short fingernails. You know what I mean? So a lot of those uh, type of things are probably what is yeah. hard it's for a barrier. Yeah, exactly. And I think a lot of guys go through that too, where, you know, a, it, like I just said, I'm not homophobic, but no. you're you're literally hugging and grabbing and you're jumping on top. And, 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 yeah, and <laughs> Don't then, make it weird. And in some <laughs> points, sometimes, you you know, the guy is sitting on your face. Yep. You know? Hey, I've had guys sit on my face in jujitsu. jitsu it's, it's not a comfortable position to be in, but you have to be comfortable in that uncomfortable position. And, and I think that's the hurdle that most of us have to get yeah. over. I think a lot of women would, like, gravitate. Like, there's a has been a big contingent of women at PMA and Dairy. Yeah. And, like, once they have each other, they can stick together and train together. Because, let's be honest, not every woman wants to get kimura because by a dude because you're going to have balls in your face. Yeah, that is very right? true. Very true. But the, thing, but the, the other thing is, too, uh, that I've noticed is that uh, the the women that stick with it, they gravitate towards uh, rolling with the guys because I never left Plasto, right? right? I was like, I'm the okay. I am now. There was there was one, then there were two, then there were three of us. Now it's zero because I haven't. I've been on a break from jujitsu, but I'll yeah. go back. Yeah, there's not there's back. no women in jujitsu in Plasto at the moment. Well, Monday there will be. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I'll see. Maybe you could be my partner on Thursday. Show me, on what, Thursday? I've been Show me yeah. what I've been missing. I'll be Chris. there. I already told Rick I'll be there since they're going to be closed. Yeah, next week. The, the, the following week. Yeah. Um, Ooh, um, go ahead. One more thing. So about powerlifting or like weightlifting, any, like any working with weights in general, a lot of women shy away from it because they say, I've heard it so many times, I don't want to get bulky. I don't want to look like a man. And I'm okay. like, oh, ladies, no, no, no. You will have to work so hard to get bulky the force feeding the constant lifting progressive overload you'd have to go through hypertrophy blocks that's when you're just trying to put on like increase the size of the muscle okay um not strength but the size the size um you would have to work so hard or you would have to be on performance enhancing drugs to get bulky you i guarantee that you will not look like a man the women who naturally lift and get bigger and stronger look super feminine i think you mm -hmm. get like curves you know well i've never seen i've never seen any woman that does power lifting or just strength training actually look like a dude no if ever. you're going to look like a dude you have to go on anabolic steroids and abuse them that's what makes you look yeah like a man. now now in the world of power lifting because this is always a fun subject but mm -hmm. Have you come into any transgender power lifters? Not that I know of. Okay. Um, in fact, there was one meet where I was like, I think there's a trans woman competing in my division. My, uh, my, my brother and my coach and I were kind of going back and forth on this. And he's like, my coach was like, I think she's just on a lot of steroids. Oh, and, okay. Uh, and especially like. There are steroids now that women can take that are, if you take them in moderation, you will not get that androgyny, androgynous effects mm -hmm. where they masculinize you. But long ago, they, those didn't exist, and there were plenty of women who overdid it on steroids and got male pattern baldness, got an Adam's apple, yep. got like, uh, you know, yeah, your back's. Your backside looks like and a Dorito. The voice deepens too, that right? Too. And mm -hmm. So I think that's what it was. But um, so every sport is dealing with this right now. Yeah, well, that's every that's sport. why I brought but it up. Yeah. yeah. So every I mentioned that there are different federations for powerlifting. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're all taking different approaches. Um, so U.S. Powerlifting Association, the USPA, 
which I've lifted in before, they now have a, a special um, – they have special rules for trans athletes. I believe there is a – I don't think they made a division yet, but they have special rules for trans athletes. USA Powerlifting actually made like a a trans category called MX. So okay. whether you're male to female or female to male, you go and lift in there. Oh, okay. And then well, it's then it's a biologically female and biologically male cisgendered people. So like I'm cisgendered. I right. was born female. I identify as female. I don't do anything to change my gender. They all go together. The trans people are in their own division than the men. And I get what they're trying to do. So everyone's trying to do it their own way. The U.S. Powerlifting Association, I just remembered, what they did was they banned all hormonal substances from drug-tested events. But oh, then Really? They, yeah, so th- I think what they were trying to get at is y- if you're trans and you're doing hormone therapy. Yeah, or, yeah. Well, um, it would be. You would be. You would then be. Then you can't go, if, it, if it's a drug-tested event. Right. A lot of their events aren't. Like, You'd ha- fail. You would fail. Mm-hmm. They'd say you can't lift. Like, I, let's say I was doing that, I wouldn't be able to lift with the women. They'd say you're on hormones, you're disqualified. Right. So I wouldn't even be going to lift with the men, I would be disqualified. <laughs> or in like a guest lifter category where you couldn't set records or or win medals um but then when it was just released like last january i think maybe december the new rules saying you couldn't have any hormones in your body and then all of a sudden women were like um what about birth control because birth control pills uh, uh, hormone. contain hormones yep. and then somebody else was like well i'm diabetic i take insulin insulin's a hormone and oh shit it is isn't it us powerlifting association all of a sudden they deleted their facebook post announcing this rule change cuz i think they didn't think it through all the way no they didn't because Almost every woman of childbearing age is on birth control of some sort. Yep. And there are a lot of diabetic people, and that shouldn't preclude you from competing in your sport. So they had to go back and think about it. And it there was, there's been a lot of to-do about it, about how this wow. rule was made and implemented very short order. And, like, there were people who showed up to compete at a big meet one day and, like, basically found out they could not compete. Oh, no because kidding. Because they were transgendered, and they, they were like, well, you can't compete. Because wow. you're on hormones. I did not yeah. know that. Because the, the, the they didn't do the best job rolling out those new rules. Well, th- that's it's. Uh, I feel for all of these oh, corporations right now because this <sighs> is a shit show to deal with. There are no good answers. We're all searching for the, the, whatever we can. I don't know if I have an answer, but I think I have the same dege- suggestion that everybody has. Unfortunately, if you are transgender, you're just gonna have to wait. I think you're going to have to wait until there's a jan- transgender uh, 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 section. Yeah. And then you can compete with other transgenders because this, the, the, the UFC fighter that didn't tell anybody oh. uh, uh, that, 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 that was a, a man that went to a woman, didn't tell anybody, and then was fighting women and just knocking them out. See what I mean? And then that <laughs> that was what Joe Rogan brought up and what got most of this started because that was incorrect. Nobody, he... It shouldn't have been a secret. She didn't tell anybody she was a man. That's wrong. Yes. I disagree with that. Now, if you tell the women that you are a woman and they agree to fight you or swim against you or power lift against you, then that's your decision yes. to choose that. Yes. Um, but... That's not happening as much either. It's What's happening is they're saying I'm transgender, like the swimmer, mm-hmm. and now that guy was 400th in the swimming on the men's side. Then becomes a woman, jo- goes well, against the women, identifies as a woman. I, I identifies as a woman. I apologize. Yeah. I don't know if I'm PC or not, but well, identifies as a woman, but I'm also old. biologically still a man. Right. And now coming in first place while swimming. Yes. And and I'm sorry, but I think that is wrong. I do too. And I you think know that why? takes away from the women Bingo. because you have already fought so hard to get to where you you're at. Women in general, as a whole, have fought so hard to get here, and now you've got men again ah! coming in and saying, "Hey, I'm a woman now," and then they're losing. Yeah. And it's like how I don't think that's right. And that's why I say I think they just have to wait until there's enough transgender people to have your own competitions. Yeah. So 
Uh, I agree. I think, hey, you want to be trans? Do trans all day long. I respect the hell out of that. Yeah. Owning who you are. Awesome. The thing I don't like, aside from just, you know, trans women just beating other women, is um, people say, well, if you don't support trans athletes, then you're transphobic. And I'm like, I am not transphobic. I just don't want us to make accommodations for a tiniest percentage of the population at the expense of all other females. Right. I have a daughter. She's five. She's very active. She does um, we're just finishing our t-ball season. She's played soccer before. As she, I mean, she's athletically inclined, as I was growing up, and I don't want to someday see a trans person, so let's say male to female, come in and win the day when my daughter and other girls have been working their butts off in their sports to win. Yep. Because people will say, well, that's fair to the trans person. I'm like, what about 50% of the population? Yeah, exactly. Uh, if not more. Well, I mean, the women, the girls. I, I still feel the like population. there's more women on this planet than men. Maybe. I, I really do believe so, that. No offense to the trans people. I just can't see myself making special accommodations for them. Because the the trans females are going to beat the the biological females. Yeah. They just are, and, and, and that's not fair to the biological females. And you know what I've noticed about having this 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 kind of uh, a banter back and forth about the transgender community mm -hmm. is that we're never talking about women becoming men. No, we're always talking about the men becoming women and then becoming dominant in the women's sport. So, which is just. It, it just goes to show you yes. how low a man will go to fucking win. <laughs> well, I think those I'm, people really feel like they need to be that gender, and that's fine with me. But, like, then you need to sit this one out. Are you choosing choose, yeah. choose your gender identity or choose your sport? You can't have both. Yeah. No, I agree. So I think for sports like swimming, where they do individual events, let them, let them play, but you're not going to set records and you're not going to medal. Yeah. You can you can participate. But then when it comes to team sports, like, you know, my daughter's going to grow up playing, probably playing softball. Well, then it's a team sport. So if we've got a team that's got a power hitter, a power pitcher that's trans, striking out all the girls or knocking them out of the park, well, then that one team, all those people benefit from having that one True. power player, you know? And then so the team sports gets really dicey. The yeah. individual sports. Wow, I didn't even think of the team sports. The team sports, that's going to be tough, if, especially for youth, youth sports, yeah. I think. When you get to older, I mean, I don't know. I think the whole thing's kind of dicey. It's just... It, 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 there are it's, no good answers right now. Right now, there's no good answers. You're absolutely mm -hmm. correct. It's just, it's very frustrating. Uh, uh, it's, it, sorry, let me rephrase that. It's got to be very frustrating to to see this happening yeah. when when you're already working so hard to kind of prove yourself in whatever sport that you're doing yeah. and it's just got to kind of be like oh this is, you yeah. know what i mean well i did yeah and i wasn't there just an anniversary for title nine the other day like we had to get title nine before we could even get to where we are now and now this throws us for a loop with the trans athletes and i'm I did, i'm gonna uh, what is Title IX? Uh, I, you know what? I'm not a policy wonk, but Title IX basically said, like, if you're um, going to give money for youth sports, you have to give equally to um, male sport and female sport. So, like, a public school. Oh, okay. Public school system uses tax dollars for the football youth sports and, and all that. Yep. So, okay, you could... The girls have to be allowed to play football, or you have to make a girls' football team. Take your pick. Or, like, keep the spending even. If you're going to have a boys' basketball team, oh. whatever budget you have for the boys' basketball team, you have the same budget for the girls' basketball team. Oh, the really? The girls' basketball team doesn't just get so the old equipment, the old bus, whatever. Encouraging equality. Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. That's and it's I not, didn't know it's that. Not just, it's not just limited to sports, but, yeah, Title IX, I think it just had its 50th anniversary. I'm, I might be totally wrong. Yeah, but I think I think we just had the 50th anniversary of Title IX, and look how it's played out. Yeah, you know, my daughter, I coached her t-ball team. It's at her age; she's five. Um, at her age, it's mixed gender or co-ed. Yeah. Um, and I'm coaching her. Like 50 years ago, there were no girls playing t-ball, and there were no moms coaching t-ball. See, all. and that's that's the that. And I love it. 
That's what I love. Like that, those things are happening and those are great. Yes. But we can't take away from those things to, like you said, it, it help out this very small percentage less, of people. Less than 1%. Of it, the it is less than 1%. And tiny. we're not, I don't want to treat anybody as if they're less than 1%, but when it comes to the majority yeah. of the people in sports, they are less than 1%. And you're right. It seems like Twitter is just like this. It's always a loud, obnoxious. Oh, yeah. I don't, know, I don't go on there. That's I, a morass. It, don't is, do it. It, it is toxic, but corporations and the world pay attention yep. to all of that. Yep. And it seems to be so loud. But then when you actually look into it, it's it's a minority of people that are causing all this noise. And for some reason, everybody listens to them. And yeah. it's like, we need to stop doing that and just pay attention to what's going on and then figure out what we can do. As as transgenders become more and more and more, yeah. then we start making a transgender division yeah. in everything. And I think <laughs> that's going to be the best way to solve the issue because you can't have a man turning into a woman beating women. Nope. You can't have a woman turning into a man and beating men. It's, it's just not going to happen. It's not, it, I mean, that is very honest and true. It is. But that, these are facts. They're facts. And they're, it's life. And, you know, if you want to be whatever you want to be, then then do that do 100%. It. But at the same time, you might have to wait to play in the sport yeah. that you want to play in as a transgender. I, I just think that would be the best way to deal with this. I mean, trying to get people who trying to get women equal pay for sports has been a hard enough battle. Yeah. I mean, look at how long it took to get college kids money yeah. to just play the sport yeah. for their schools. Yeah. And they never got paid. And then they would never become a professional athlete. And now they're ruined. Because that's all they had, or they broke an arm, or they broke a knee, or they did something that stopped them from going any further, but they never made any money off of that. Yeah. And I'm so happy to see that now they can get sponsors, they can get paid, because if something does go sideways, and they can't become a professional, at least they got to make some well, money doing something. You know, the, their universities were making money off of that. Oh, they were always that's making it. money, and that's they a were, part that pissed they everybody were, they off. They were slaves to their college or university. And they were just making that school hand over fist money, and they weren't seeing a dime. Yeah. But yet they had to pay tuition. Oh, no, I'm sorry, they got scholarships. Yeah, but still. A lot of them got scholarships, which... Uh, Shaquille O'Neal and Michael Jordan are probably like, oh, man, where was this when I was a kid? Right. Yeah. You know? Right. But, but they don't we, need it. Hey, you know what? The the future we're always evolving, right? There are plenty of things that I wish I had a few years ago, oh ten God. years ago, that they have now, like paid <sighs> mandatory paid parental leave in Massachusetts. Yeah. We I had to save money so I could go take months off to be with my kids. <sighs> Well, now, now men can take maternity that's what I'm leave. Saying. Oh, it's that's paid. what you're saying. It's, it's paid. Man, it's mandatory. We pay everybody in Massachusetts. Everybody who earns a paycheck in Massachusetts pays money into a, a fund, and that money is used to pay people, parents, whether you have a new child or you've adopted a child, that you get paid leave, parental leave. Okay, good. And I'm like, I wish I had that. I was so they, scooping and saving pennies so I could. Take so they a few didn't. With my they kids. didn't do that for for you. Well, I I, I thought have... all women across the board, oh, no. if you were having a baby, you oh. were on maternity leave. And I was unpaid. Like, unpaid. Unpaid. So they had oh. they had to give you a couple of weeks, not unpaid, but you couldn't lose. You all it was is you could not lose your job because you had. Oh, a baby. okay, okay. So, um. Private and public companies and, you know, um, civil service, they didn't have to pay them any money. Oh. So I took, you basically go on, like, medical disability. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Because you, know, like, you are unable to work. You're not disabled, but you're unable to work because you just gave birth to a tiny human and your body is a wreck. But, um, wow. But then after that, like, um, maybe your employer would pay you. Maybe they wouldn't while you were on leave. Maybe you had vacation or sick time that you were going to use. Maybe you were doing unpaid leave, which is what I did with my first child. He's, this is only like, we're coming up on eight years now. Eight years ago, I had to save money and put it in my savings account so that I could take two months off to be with my son when he was born, my first child. Wow, that's awful. Because I, my company wasn't going to pay me a penny. Now there's legislation passed in Massachusetts saying everybody gets paid time off. Now they're not saying it's any great amount of money or anything like that, but... Right, but at least you're going to get something. Don't make parents choose between earning a living, like keeping the lights on and the food in the fridge, and keeping their job. 
Yeah, well, that's kind of oh, ridiculous to child. do. Don't choose between keeping your job and having yeah, a child. Yeah, of course not. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Wouldn't you think that we would have already had, you already thought everyone had maternity leave. I no? did. You just couldn't get I, fired I, for I having I a child. I literally thought that all women got maternity leave no matter what because nope. you got to have it in order to have the child and then you have to heal in yeah. order to go back to work. Yeah. Because you then, basically need to lay down for two weeks. But or then more. you do this, which actually encourages people not to have kids. Yes. Because you got to keep working, right? So that's an encouragement not to have kids. But I thought it was the the men finally getting maternity leave themselves, which yeah, I think yeah. is weird. Yeah. Because guys, I mean, great. Yeah, sure. You should be with the kid. You definitely want you to be a good dad. Mm -hmm. But. Why do you have to stay home for three months it's, and stay out of work? It's a luxury. That That's just a, like a. It's not a medical necessity. No. For you, but maybe for the kid it could be. Maybe for the maybe kid. Maybe we're going is to find out. Maybe we're going to find out many years from now that it's a medical necessity for the child to have a parent at home. So, so you, okay. Maybe. So maybe. Know, psychologically. Maybe having the dad home in that first three months would help with. Uh, um, Baby's development. Oh. That's it. That's it. That's, we don't know. I'm saying that's a possibility. That I mean, it out. sounds uh, it sounds like it's something that would help. But at the same time, I'm like, why do guys need to be off after? Maybe so mom can go back. Oh, to work. so mom. Can, <laughs> well, maybe so mom could rest well, a little bit easier. Well, this is about equality of the genders, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. If women can get if women can get paid time off work, men should too, right? I don't know about that. I feel like. I feel I don't know. I feel I like guys should toughen it up a little bit more and get <laughs> hey, the fuck women, back to work. Women have been very tough. I mean, there are women going back to work like two weeks after they have a baby because they toughen the fuck up. Yeah. But well, that's terrible. Yeah, but you give a guy three months off, it's like leisure. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I, I mean, just it's not like, oh, believe me, when I was on maternity leave, I wasn't doing anything fun. I was like at home crying, being like, why is my life like this? <laughs> I was I was a mess and I could not wait to go back to work. No yeah, offense, but no offense, kids. I love you. I was <laughs> yeah. ready to go back to work. But but in but in in saying that, like like the guy didn't go through anything. No, you know. So but there's I can, a lot of that. Maybe he needs to take care of baby mama. Well, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it helps with you, your the the woman's recovery. It helps maybe with the child connecting more with the father. Yep. So I can see some positives so in that. Healthy development. But me not having any children, I was like, I don't even know if I would take the three months. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, I, I didn't go through anything. Yeah. But when you when you say it like that, I'm like, oh, yeah, she might she might need some help. You know, the kids might be a little bit too much to handle. So oh, yeah. Especially yeah. if you have multiple kids. Yeah, okay. Um, but also I think like, then there's no stigma. If if parental leave is only for women, then that's parenting and doing stuff with the kids and taking a break from work. That's for women. Men, okay. Men, we can work, you know? So it's like, well, if we're going to take away the stigma of in the workplace of having a child, huh. then the men need to. Okay, so this is my old same, thinking. I'm not saying it's old thinking. You're not yeah. that old anyway. But, yeah, you know, no. I know their national grid, my employer now has paid parental leave. Uh, for all parents, whether you're adopting a child or having a child, and the men take their time. I mean, uh, like, guys are gone all the time, and I'm like, did he have another baby? Because, you know, the men don't look pregnant in right. the office, so I didn't know they were having a baby, and then, boom, someone's gone for a couple weeks. And I, I think it's great. My yeah. ex-husband took time off for both of our kids. Yeah, my, my, my wife's had many managers that she's like, oh, the, this manager's gone for, like, four weeks. You know, his wife just had a kid, and I'm like, yeah. what? Yeah. She's like, yeah, you well. You got to take care of the mom, uh, I think. In Walmart, they do the same thing now. Oh, they, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. All, men get, I think it was like three weeks or a month off and 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 f for that. So uh, all these corporations are starting to do it. Yeah. But that's that's why I was like, oh, that seems so stupid. But that's just my dad chirping in the back oh, of yeah. my head being you. like, you, you just get the fuck back to work. I dude. mean, fathers used to not even go to the hospital until like I, the baby was ready to go home they'd look at it and be like oh it's good i mean it, good uh, job honey my mom told me that when i was younger i had no idea who my dad was why because he was never home oh my goodness so my dad would always be at work he was second third shift mm -hmm. my mom was the only one taking care of me mm -hmm. my dad would come and go come and go like he was there but he but he was mostly at work mm -hmm. and, well, then and he was sleeping and he, yeah exactly <laughs> and, and he used to have a beard and mm -hmm. then one day he came home he was clean shaven and i guess i freaked 
out. I had no idea who this man was, yeah. why he was picking me up, and it was two combinations between him shaving off his facial hair threw me threw me off, I guess, and then because he was always at work and he wasn't in his home as much as my mom, it was almost a disassociation. Like, I disconnected from him in a sense. So when you're saying all these things, it does make a little bit more yeah. sense to me because obviously the older ways and having your kid freak out over you is not a good thing to yeah. go through either. That could be kind of traumatic. Yeah. But... Uh, yeah, I guess I can change my way of thinking on this I now. Think, That's I think pretty good. having parental leave instead of just maternity leave. Parental leave allows people to do what they need and want to do within their own family. Yeah. And, you know, if you if men want to take that time, take it. And if women want to take that time, take it. And well, whatever works for you. And also think there are also families that have two fathers and they either adopt or surrogate a baby. Somebody's got to... Granted, they're not medically healing, they're not breastfeeding, but someone's got to take care of that new baby when it comes home, and it's a huge life shift, too. Yeah. Everything you thought you knew is wrong. <laughs> it's wrong? <sighs> what? Yeah. It's mind-boggling. No shit. And then you get over it. Okay. <laughs> uh, but you definitely changed my mind on that. I'm not I'm here thinking... to change minds. I'm just no, saying, I think but... it's about giving everybody the time to do what's right for their family or their lifestyle, their kid. No, and I, I, I just think that it's it's good to be able to change my mind. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, yeah, I, 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 was, I had an ideology. I thought a specific way, but this opens me up to a different way of thinking, yeah. which allows my opinion to change. Okay. And I think more people today need to have their opinions changed yeah. in, in, on a lot of things. Well, a lot of us spend time in echo chambers. Like right. Twitter or Facebook, whatever, yeah. where you can just very narrowly focus on what it is that you want to hear. Yeah. So you're just getting, it's just the echo coming right. I say this and that person says that it comes right back to me and we don't have to hear any other opinions or get any other views on this. Right. I, ju I just think it's good to have, that's why I love having this open dialogue and I always like listening to people that I don't like listening to. <laughs> Because you're it, very brave to do that. It's it's very hard sometimes, mm -hmm. it's a, but at the same time, you know, it it gives you all of the perspectives. Yes. And it allows you to make a better opinion about what's going on. And that's what you just did for me. Okay. And I think more people across the board need to start doing this. Yeah. Because if I was just stringent in my opinion and I didn't change my mind, then I would just continue keep saying that guys should go back to work. And, and But you're right. It's an overall thing, and it's good for both of the sexes. It's good for the kids, and it's just an overall good thing, period. And I didn't think of it that way. So okay. I want to thank cool. you for opening up uh, my mind. You're very um, Now, uh, so saying all this about women and transgender and stuff like that, um, what – like I've noticed that you have been – posting a bunch of stuff on uh, the guns and 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 abortion yep. is giant right now yep, the two big Supreme Court cases two that just two came giant out. things that are going on I personally think that the uh, abortion thing uh, is absolutely insane I don't understand any of it because I don't understand our laws okay. enough to understand what the hell happened okay. and why did they do this? Okay. So, yes, I've been talking a lot about this on Instagram and my stories lately. Um, what happened with the abortion case, right? The yeah. overturning of Roe v. Wade. Roe v. Wade was a, um, gosh, I think it was like 50 years ago now. Yep. Roe v. Wade was a Supreme Court decision about 50 years ago. I'm not an attorney, by the way. <laughs> um, no legal training. was a decision that said um, states cannot ban abortion in the first trimester of okay. a woman's pregnancy. So s states can't make a law. Right. Because if they did make such a law, it would be unconstitutional because there's a clause in, oh, I want to say it's the 14th Amendment, but check my math on that. It's called the per, um, right to privacy. Okay. And they're saying uh, a woman's pregnancy is a matter of privacy. That's between her and her doctor only to decide if she can, should, will, and how have an abortion. Um, and because that um, 
right to privacy was part of the Constitution, they said you can't interfere with that with state law. The states cannot make laws, and even the um, Congress in D.C., um, in the federal legislature, they cannot make laws that contradict the Constitution. Okay. Now, right to privacy for the past 50 years, a lot of people have been debating, does the right to privacy include abortion? Okay. So with, so the Supreme Court said recently, they said, nope, there's no, the, the, there is no right to an abortion in the Constitution. That's the, the way the Supreme Court ruled recently. Oh. It's, it's way more multifaceted than that. There is no right to an abortion. So when they overturned Roe v. Wade, which was the most previous landmark decision on abortion, they said states can't ban abortion. Um, and they now they're saying states can ban abortion. They're just trying to give it a constitutional sniff test. Well, it's more than a sniff, but they're basically saying, does this does this go against the Constitution of the United States? So Jesus. in individual states right now, and there are many of them. Yeah, there's 26. Can constitutionally, as of today, make laws or reenact laws or enforce laws. Yep that ban abortion or put stringent limitations on abortion. That does not mean that abortion is illegal in the United States. Right. It's legal in New Hampshire. 24 weeks. It's legal in Massachusetts with restrictions and guidelines, but pretty much. Um, So, you know, right now it really matters on which state you live in. Right. And um, there are plenty of women in states where they're not going to be able to get an abortion. And people say, well... Then go to the next closest state. Well, we're talking time. Yeah. We're talking money. And not to mention the few uh, abortion providers, healthcare providers in their area might not be able to handle the amount, the demand yeah. for abortions because people from other states are going to be looking outward. And, you know, by the time you find out you're pregnant, make a very, very difficult decision about whether you're going to have the child or not. Right. And then... Contact a, a abortion provider in a healthcare system. It might already be, you might already be at thirty weeks. Oh Jesus! You can no longer, or by the time you save the money or get somebody to give you a right. I mean, it's so, just it's very difficult. So by the time you actually figure everything out, it could already be too late. Yes, to do anything See, about to it have it a now. legal abortion in right. another state. Your baby's too far along. Jesus it's, Christ! It's really tough. So. It, the Supreme Court did not say abortion is illegal. I think a lot of people jumped to that. And yeah, no, of is, course this, they did. A lot yeah, of people yeah, jumped yeah. to that and that's, thought this That's is like wacky, the biggest thing. It's like Handmaiden's that, Tale kind of thing. It, 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 not to put it in comparison, but uh, Jewel recently got banned in the United States. I just dumped water <laughs> down my You got a hole in your chin? I got wet boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, this is getting clicks, okay? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, but Jewel got banned in the United States. Okay, it did? It did. Okay. So, but... Ev- I didn't hear that, but uh, I knew something was going to happen. I, got, I knew it was going to happen. I got an article about three or four days ago now letting me know that it was possibly getting uh, banned. By and the FDA? Then, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. The FDA was banning Jewel... Um, and then I think it was Wednesday they put it through. And mm-hmm. then Thursday I went into work. I talked to the owner. And he had no idea this was happening. Oh, no. So I Surprise. looked into it. And what they said was is Jewel can no longer sell their vape products to the United States. Okay. Well, what everybody heard was that vaping was banned in the United States. Yeah. Okay. So it's yeah, same thing. People- same idea, but it, completely different, of yeah. course. Uh, but that was the phone calls mm-hmm. that I was getting yesterday. I had so many customers come in. Oh, well, can you still sell? Can you sell? Is it banned? Is it? I'm like, so I made a, a huge announcement about it yesterday uh, on the on the channel on Instagram. You know, stating that it was just Jewel. Mm-hmm. The, wh- whatever we have left, we'll sell it. Once it's gone, we can't reorder it. Okay. So that's basically the end so of it. get it while you can. Right. But again, just like abortion is not illegal in the United States, just like vaping is not illegal yet in yeah. the United States. But I think there. once I heard that there was a, if I'm not incorrect, there was a federal ban on flavored tobacco. 
correct? They're, they are trying, and uh, uh, um, uh, I'll be getting into I mean, this states, in a little bit more states detail. States have already been doing it. Uh, states like have already been putting flavor bans in act. And yeah. what I've noticed uh, is that every state that has legalized marijuana mm-hmm. has a flavor ban. Oh. So if you have marijuana legal in your state, you probably don't have vape flavors. And if you do, like Vermont, uh-huh. they're in the middle of pushing for no flavors. It's amazing to me. Um, and I've been saying this because look, I've, I've vaped off and on for the past, like, two years. Okay. I'm actually off right now, but that doesn't mean I wouldn't consider going back sometime. I really like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's be honest. Anyway, um, when I when I heard about the ban on flavored tobacco, so things like menthol cigarettes mm-hmm. or even, like, flavored cigars. That's, that's what they're trying like that, to push. I thought it was already done. And no. I said, it's funny that, like, in Massachusetts, for example, where I live... You cannot buy menthol cigarettes. You can't buy flavored vapes, but you can go and buy like, you know, cannabis gummy bears. Mm -hmm. And I said, my understanding is the whole reasoning behind banning the flavored tobacco was the, and the flavored vapes. So flavored nicotine, let's say, was because children. Yes. That's their number one argument. We're using it. And I said, do you not think that those cookies, brownies, and gummies look delicious to kids? Right. And, you know, uh, the sale of nicotine was regulated, and you had to be a certain age and have an ID. And they say the same thing about cannabis, but they're talking out both sides of their mouth. Right. Well, here... So which one is it? Because if I were 16, I would want to chew those gummies. Yeah, but here's the biggest problem with the vape industry. Mm -hmm. Um, There was no age limit on it. What so do you mean? so when vaping ten years ago, oh, ten years ago, ten years ago, but now it's twenty one. But yes, but that took quite a bit. Yes. So when they first started selling vapes in the United States, it probably was longer than ten, but ten is when it really started to get known. Yeah. It there was no age limit. Wow. Anybody at any My age, five year old could go get a go, watermelon jelly. You weren't vape, asking vape. for cigarettes; you were asking for vape, and there was Sounds no. Delicious age bracket on that okay then they finally pushed it to be 18 okay they didn't do that until we were open for a year and a half we were open we've been open now for six years new hampshire state uh, new hampshire vape gallery right then they pushed it to 18 so we had to fiddle through all of the underage Mm -hmm. and then they go to 19 then they finally made it 21 Mm -hmm. and i think that's just going to be the age bracket in the united states period it is um, that's the federal law now. Right. So they had to go through all of that. But that's what hurt the vape industry the most is because of all of the sales to the people that now fall into an age bracket too low to mm-hmm. get their nicotine. Mm-hmm. They're already addicted to the nicotine. Yeah. So now they're doing Nicorette everything gum. they can to get their hands on those vapes. Okay. And they were getting their hands on Juul because it was the easiest one. Mm-hmm. It was everywhere. And it looked like a, a pen battery. Yes. So yes. you could have it in school. They would hide it in their shirts. And, you know, all this stuff was going on. So Jewel got targeted. Yeah. Now, if you but watch like, the documentary on Jewel, they didn't, the people that designed it and made it in Silicon Valley in California, they didn't make exactly the best decisions when they were first distributing this item. So mm-hmm. there was some stuff that they had some discrepancies with that already made the company look bad in the first place. Mm-hmm. And then all of this stuff happened, which is why they attack them first. Well, they're a big name. They're a giant name, right? And if we can kick them out of the country, yeah. well, now... We can instate these taxes that they want to do. Mm-hmm. They can instate these bans that they want to do. And then once these taxes and these bans go in place, you think inflation's bad? Wait till a 65% tax shows up on every vape product, oh my God. period. We already get taxed 10 cents per milliliter on juice. Mm-hmm. They That's a lot. It's, it's, it's quite a bit. And then... The disposables were also 10 cents per milliliter. Mm -hmm. Now they're 30 cents per milliliter. Yeah. So they're even more expensive than they were. And they want to do the 65% tax on pouches. Yep. Any sort of nicotine. The batteries, coils, tanks, 65%. Now, Massachusetts has already done all of these bans. And they're a 75% tax. Wow. So... 
My, I, I was like, oh, well, is Massachusetts going to drop it down to 65 and just pay the state? Probably not. Massachusetts nah. is going to take their 75 for their state, and they're going to charge you the 65 for the federal. Yeah. So that, they're going to go. Massachusetts doesn't want to deal with it. They're like, astronomical. Let's just, if you want to smoke, good luck. But We're taking all the money. If I'm, sell, <laughs> if I'm selling a device for 55 bucks, you add 65%. That device now is 120 something bucks yep. for that one device. So all of these things getting implemented will slowly close the door on the vaping industry because yeah, it'll be a luxury. I, yes. Or people will go to, Native they're going American. to go back to cigarettes is what they're going to do because are you going to spend $120 on a device mm -hmm. and then $30 on a bottle of juice? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to go buy an $11, $12 pack of cigarettes? Yeah. I was going to say, remember when cigarettes were super cheap yep. years ago? Now they're, yes, they're very, they're like $11 now. a pack. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, what's $11? So <laughs> what, what I, <laughs> what I unfortunately do see is I do see uh, smoking nicotine, period, becoming illegal in the United States. People have been pushing for it forever. But I'm like, but with the gummies and the kids? Oh, my gosh. It, I don't know how to argue that. I don't either. Because I want marijuana to be legal. Yeah. I but also saying, want vaping to be legal. They, they really are. The flavored... Stimulants, but whether it's nicotine or yep. cannabis, it's a watermelon flavored vape or it's a watermelon flavored gummy, gummy. bear. Yeah, I'm like that's all appealing to children. And my kids are five and seven right now. I'm going to have to confront this head on as my yeah. kids oh, get older. Of course, yeah, of course. And you know, if my kids want to do cannabis, I'm not, I'm not just categorically opposed to it. I, you know, I'd probably be more worried about my kids getting addicted to nicotine when they're young. Because right. Because children are very susceptible to nicotine addiction. Yes. Yeah. Well, the, the, it, the problem with the disposables and the jewels and everything else is that it's 50 milligrams. It's a crazy amount of nicotine. It is. Because it's made to help you get over the cravings of the extra chemicals in the cigarettes. So you're kind of overloading yourself with nicotine. Oh, it's to, a high dosage. Right. To okay. get to get to separate you from the cigarettes. That's why it was designed that way. Wow. I didn't know that. It's not designed to, to vape 24-7. It's not designed That's for somebody to... That's what I was to, doing. Well, you're not supposed to... You That's shouldn't what I do was that. doing. It's but delicious. We were, yeah, but it's not... In a nice If you want to do that, then do a three milligram. Okay. You know what I mean? Don't do a 50 milligram. I just got told. Yeah. <laughs> but, hey, I'm, I haven't vaped in months. And I've told everybody, if you've never smoked or vaped or anything, don't start now. If you really want nicotine, go get some nicotine gum, go get some lozenges, go get some pouches, because as of right now, that may be all that's left anyways. Well, um, I, we've all heard stories about people who are, have never smoked or vaped and are addicted to something like nic Nicorette or lozenges. Every, I heard, I just... Nic I nicotine in general is a highly, highly addictive uh, uh, drug. Yes. It's a highly addictive drug. Don't have a problem with that. What I have a problem with is the way that we uh, absorb nicotine. Mm -hmm. Every single way you do it is actually really bad for you. So mm -hmm. smoking cigarettes are the worst. Yes. Smoking a cigar yeah. is second. Uh -huh. Then you got vaping, which falls in third. It's uh -huh. still not good for you, but it's better than those two because you get rid of the carcinogens. Yeah. The pouches, the gum... The lozenges, those are literally the healthiest way to take in nicotine. Nicotine and patches too. Weren't there patches? patches? Yep. Uh, sorry, I always forget about those. Yeah. I know somebody um, who quit using a patch. I, I use the patches, they didn't work for me. Mm -hmm. But if you do any of those, now you're just getting nicotine. Mm -hmm. Taking in nicotine is just like taking in caffeine. Mm -hmm. It goes in and out of your system in under three hours. Really? It's it, in and out. Mm-hmm. But it's the way that we take it in that's extremely unhealthy. And yes. the only reason I'm not against this ban on all of this stuff, mm -hmm. one, even though I am because it's my livelihood that mm -hmm. the government is destroying right now, is that it kills you. Yeah. It's guaranteed to fucking kill you. Yes. So is alcohol. Yes. And, that's and, what and, nobody's and, talking about. And, and when I quit drinking, 
I was like, they should make alcohol illegal. They should do this. It's horrible for you. Look at look at but being off of it for six months is done for me, you know? Yeah. Um, and my friend looked at me and he goes, man, we don't all have fucking problems drinking like you do. Well, and I was like. But it's still not good for you. Right. But so my argument is, is now, now my argument is, okay, you're right. Everybody doesn't have a problem drinking like I do. I understand that now, and therefore, my argument has died for telling people to quit drinking uh, because of those reasons. But alcohol and benzos, if you get off of them, they kill you. Alcohol can kill you if you drink too much of it. So, same with cigarettes. Cigarettes kill you over time, and the way that we intake this stuff kills our lungs, it kills our bodies, and it eventually kills us. Yes. So my argument today is, if it kills you, should it just be illegal? Because now cannabis should be legal because it hasn't killed anybody. Yeah, probably not. Not There's, that I know of. Not that I know of. I, I think I looked up deaths from marijuana five or six years ago, and there was one person. And it wasn't even from the marijuana. It wasn't it was, an OD. It, it, was, it, was, it wasn't an OD, correct. Yeah. And that... that that's what they try to. I don't to, think you can OD on. Cannabis. I've tried. <laughs> I've literally tried, and you can't do it. I've done so many dabs, eaten so many edibles, smoked. You can't die from smoking too you, much pot. You're, you're gonna get hungry and experiment. go to bed. Yeah, I've yeah. loved experimenting with pot. <laughs> I um, I, so in 2020. Yeah. That pandemic, like just the craze that happened around like March of 2020. Yes. And it's like we didn't know what was going on. Everything is shut down. Mm-hmm. Except for essentials. Well, guess what? In Massachusetts, liquor stores were essential. Yeah. And I was like, they're not. So that's weird. But oh, but, but I can't go to the gym. Right. I can go to the liquor store, but I can't go to the gym. Okay. Makes no sense at all. And one of my friends said, well, you know, there are a lot of people in, in Massachusetts, in America, in the world, who are addicted to alcohol if they go... If they close the liquor stores, because in Massachusetts, you can only get it at a liquor store for the most right. part. You can get beer and wine some places, but it's the liquor stores with licenses. I said, if those close, a lot of people are going to be showing up at the hospital yeah. in withdrawal. Well, that was why they became essential. Yes, because it was to so keep many people, people alive. People are addicted to alcohol and they will have a grand mal seizure or something. People will die or they will have very bad withdrawal and the hospitals need to deal with COVID, not people going through withdrawal. And that's when it hit me. I was like, well, I'm sure that Governor Baker just likes a drink every night. No, nope, it was no, it was literally to keep people alive. But here's the the flip on that. Mm-hmm. And the re- can't go to the gym, though. Yeah, exactly. You couldn't go to the gym. You couldn't go to an AA meeting. Really? There was no, those were all shut down. You can't go to an AA meeting, but you can go to a liquor store. Yes. Thank you. Well, that was the, that was one of the problems I was having is that I was what a, probably about a year and a half separated from alcohol at mm-hmm. that point, and that's when I started this podcast. I remember because you told I me about this. couldn't. I I I wanted to drink because I was out of work. I was at home. I was. Losing my mind, and I didn't know where to project my energy because we lost jujitsu. We lost everything. You, lo- we lost everything. We lost everything. Our four walls, basically. Exactly. Yeah. And so I was like, I "What my, do I do?" My husband. Yeah. Oh. Well, it's okay. But we're, we're on good terms now. Good. Okay. That's good. I, I, I feel like when things happen, you know, they're supposed to, in a sense, even yeah. though things that happen are horrible. But when we get through them, we can look back at them yeah. and go, this was b- for the better, even though at the time it was absolutely horrible. Do you? I'm going to ask you a personal question because right. I'm interviewing you now. Uh, so do you feel that way about alcoholism, that you went through alcoholism for a reason? Because you're through it and you're in a better place I, now. But I do. Do you feel like you had to go through that and be an addict? I do feel like I had to do it. I oh. had to uh, go through all of the troubles, all of the jail, all of the ruining people's lives. I had to go through all of that um, to finally get myself to a point where I realized that if I lost my license again uh, from drinking, I was going to literally lose everything that I've been working on. And, um, you know, 
it doesn't come without heartache and looking back on it and being upset with myself or disappointed. Like now I'm, I'm, I'm having conversations with great people. I'm, I'm, I'm learning. Not me. I'm I'm, not. No, no, no. You are. I'm just some chick. And, but, <laughs> but I had to, I had to go through all of that to realize everything that I missed out on because of it. Oh. So, so the way I look at it for myself is that I'm learning all over again. Okay. My vocabulary was like a two-year-old because I didn't absorb anything in school. Okay. I was too busy getting fucked up, being drunk, tripping really? on acid in high really? school. Yeah, I, w- I started out high school as an A student. I graduated as a C student in the lowest classes possible to just graduate so that I could give the middle finger to my entire family. Oh my God. That literally told me I was not going to graduate if I continued on the path I was on. So I literally did whatever I could to get out of school. So I went from A classes to like B, C classes to just get the fuck out of here. Okay. I got my diploma, give everybody the middle finger and move, the, move on. Yeah. And, and I didn't go to college. I didn't do any of that because it just wasn't in it for me. But my vocabulary was horrible. My, uh, my attention span was horrible. And that was, oh, ADD, ADHD. But that's something that's... Do, do, you can deal with that yes. on your own. You don't yes. need drugs for that. No. Um, but I was on drugs for depression. I was on drugs for high anxiety. I was on so many uh, different uh, types of drugs to try and get myself to a good point. Well, guess what? I got rid of alcohol and I got rid of the drugs. Mm-hmm. I got rid of thi- I got rid of everything. Oh, this is the dark side of mental health care. I've right. heard. I don't work in mental health care. My friend Ashley does, and I've heard things where like people come into detox, and their list of medications is like, it's just like giant. Just, like, just long. Every symptom is being treated with drugs, and they're like, ooh, whoa, that is not helping that person. No, and I was that still drinking. In dire, exactly. And really, there was there was a totally different path and a totally different solution. For you, that didn't right. involve drinking or prescription drugs. Which is why I look back on it today. And yes, I am disappointed in myself, but I'm in a better place now. I just can't imagine you not caring about something or like wanting to give anyone the middle finger. Because granted, I've only known you for two years. True. And I don't even know you that well. Right. Right. And like, I was just thinking on my way over here today, I love your positivity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love your spirit. You've always got that huge smile on your I, face. I, and I'm like, who is he talking about? This dark person. Yeah, oh no. Who I wanted to give everyone the middle finger. <laughs> I'm like, that's not Topher. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who oh is no. That? It, it 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 was Chris. That, there you go. It was Chris and I've 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 let go of Chris. Awesome. Chris Chris was a very negative person. He was uh very uh self absorbed Mm -hmm. and he really didn't give a shit about anything except for getting drunk or getting high and just doing whatever he wanted to do and he didn't care who he hurt or uh threw to the side along his way so uh because of that you know i've definitely had a lot of struggles um but yeah being where i am today is absolutely a, a complete 180 and it's the reason why i'm positive it's the reason why i have the smile on now because i actually have positivity to give back to people i actually have something that i had to go through and i didn't realize that you know you kind of always feel like you're on this path by yourself yeah no matter what's going on yeah and you're not and that's one of the reasons why I, that's really the main reason I started this is because I felt like there was more people feeling like they're by themselves than feeling like there's other people out there going oh, through yeah. what I'm going through. Yeah. And, and that's what I keep striving for. We're all struggling yeah. through even today. We're all still struggling. This is not yeah. getting easier. I wish that it was true that when we got older, it got easier, but it, <laughs> it gets a little bit more difficult, but you understand yeah. things a little bit better. Yeah, I agree. And my, my sense of understanding has gotten so much better now that I was like, oh, this is what it's like to have an actual thought. Aww. I was like, this is what it's like to have a, a decent conversation. Or now I've looked back at my older podcast and I'm like, holy crap, my vocabulary has gotten a little bit better. Uh, my speech has gotten better. And that's all from quitting drinking. Wow. 
because I was stuck at 21, 20. Yeah. That's where I was stuck. I was a 20-year-old in my 40s. You had arrested development. Or late 30s, I should say. Arrested development, yeah. But, yeah, so that's... I hope I answered the question. Yes. But, yeah, it's just... Been, it's, it's, I think everything that we go through is for a reason, whether we understand the reason or not. Okay. I think it's there. It's happening for some reason. We may never understand the reason. No. But it's what's happening right now, so... Why not get through it? I'm not going to throw my hands up and give up. No, gosh, I don't. No. I, I don't want to do that because then that's not going to get me anywhere. So I feel like the harder I push, the more I push myself. And even though I'm extremely hard on myself, if I keep doing it, I'm just going to keep getting better. And this is going to get a little bit easier day after day. That's what separates the men from the boys or the women from the girls. you got to be hard on yourself and just... You know? Yeah, you really no, do. No easy street. No participation trophies here. Oh, no. No. None. Although I will say yesterday I earned three gold participation medals because I registered for certain events at my powerlifting meet that yeah. no other women competed in. I don't know why. Oh, really? I thought for sure. I was like, you. I, I, yeah. That's so funny because when we did the uh, inner school tournament yeah. for PMA in 2019, yep. just before lockdown, yep. I, I hope. Hey, if you hear me, bring it back. Yeah, bring it back. Bring I'm it there. back. Let's go, ladies. I want that inner school championship. Uh, but um, it was just me and this one other gentleman. We used to always call him Gandalf. I feel so bad that I don't remember his actual name. Gandalf, drop a comment. Yeah, yeah. Let us know your real name. <laughs> uh, but uh, we were the only two in the weight. Yeah. So, so he beat me. Clearly, mm -hmm. and I still got a trophy. Well, you you came in second. <laughs> I did not. But this happened. <laughs> I know I did, but yeah. I didn't. In my mind, I was like, "Oh, it's but over." If you it was single elimination. Yeah. If you guys had gone like six, if you had done six matches, or I'm sorry, let's say you did best of five or something, yeah. maybe you would have. You don't know because it's hard with one. Yeah, it was. It was. Match. It was just one of those similarity, th similar things where yeah. you. You didn't have anybody there, so they were like, you it's win. It's happened to me. But I, I, I was like, oh, I, against myself again. I got a trophy, up. too. Yeah, but I did. There was another where, like, this was the USA Powerlifting Massachusetts State Championship. They have it once a year. It was a big event. They were like, I think it was limited to 120 lifters or something like that. And assume that less than half are women. Oh, wow. But there were, plen there were plenty of people. So, like, in the open, I had competition. The open is, like, all the age groups for that weight class. Right? So I had competition. I ended up coming in fourth. I probably could have come in, eked out a third if I had done my dead, my last deadlift attempt. I didn't get it. But then, like, in the Masters, because I'm, that's, like, 39 and up, I medaled there. Oh, okay. But they do the math totally differently. So, like, this irks me. I'm still trying to figure this out. I beat a woman in the Open, but lost to her in the Masters. And I don't know how the math works out. There's all this, like... I don't know. So their scoring is just there. There's interesting. They wait. This woman is older than I am, mm -hmm. but lifts. W we're the same weight. She's way older than I am, but lifts way less weight than I do. Wow. So I beat her in the open where we were just competing in our weight class. But when we got to the masters, they grouped us together with all these lightweights. So like it was basically like 165 pounds and under but 39 years and older, and they did all of this fuzzy math. Remember fuzzy math? Mm -hmm. Fuzzy. They did all this fuzzy math, and suddenly she was in second and I was in third, and I was like, but in the open, I beat her. So, like... How did you not beat her in that? Right. It, she must have been so much older. I don't know how old she was. She must have been so much older than me that her age made up for all of the extra weight that I lifted yesterday. Oh, really? But I was like, what gives? And then I also didn't like it that they grouped us together in a lightweight because then, like, also a woman who's in the Masters, I don't know how old she is. I could go and look it up. I don't know how old, around my age, let's say, weighing 55 kilos where I was 75 kilos. So what's that like? 25 pounds less than me. She okay. she also lifted very, very little weight compared to me, but her she's so much smaller than me that you would expect that I would be able to lift more than more her. than her. So I she came in first. The older lady came in second. I came in third. And I was like, but I lifted more than them. But they had grouped us together in this lightweight class. Oh, but this happens at jujitsu tournaments too. Oh, it like, does? 
Yeah. So, especially in women's jujitsu at my age. Okay. So in jujitsu, you also you also compete by rank. In powerlifting, oh, right. there's no rank in powerlifting. I don't care if you've been lifting for one week or your entire lifetime. You're competing with each other if you're the same age and weight. Oh. In jujitsu, it's age, weight, and belt rank. Um, but in jujitsu, there aren't a lot of like female white belts in their 30s. Okay. Oh, who, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like, uh, I'd go to jujitsu tournaments and I'd have to go with the the ladies who are 10. 15 years younger than me, which okay. is fine. We're the still, same. Still staying in the same rank, though? We're, you never... We were all... We were all. This is when I had my white belt. We were yeah, all were still white, white. We were all white belts. We were all the same weight. Okay. But we were like... There was like a 20-year span. And that's okay. And then other times, like... So I had to move down to go with the 20-somethings because there was nobody else in their 30s. Then other times, we've had like women in their 30s, and then like there would be like one 20-something who would come... And go with us. So they would try to combine the ranks. So it's not that different. But usually in powerlifting, I'm used to it where, like, if I'm the only person that age and that weight and nobody else was in that cell in the matrix, if you will, then I'm only competing with myself there. Oh, and wow. I would win there. But they grouped us together. It was weird. I don't know. And I'm not saying I deserve the gold medal. That's not what I'm saying. No, no, no. But... Still, you... I was happy to get bronze, but it was some very fishy stuff because there was another woman who was technically in this lightweight group, even though she was bigger than me, and she was going to come in third. Then I beat her, which would have bumped her to fourth and off the podium. Instead, they went and put her in the heavyweight category. And I was like, whoa, 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 just because I beat her, now she goes into a different category? I think they must have rules for, like, how many people they have to group. Sounds to me like you need to dig into the rules. Sounds to me like uh, I just need to get stronger and beat everybody. everybody. World domination. You know, I don't know know how the scoring works there, but, like, scoring in general is kind of odd because you hear about, like, UFC fights. Where, oh, where the cards, the cards, oh and, the, and 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 the and the and the Calvin scores Cater and, and, Emmett. and so so I feel like every sport in general has a problem with their judges and their point systems. Oh yeah, it's always seems to be this yeah. like argument. But, oh yeah, but it sounds like because uh, I think powerlifting or weightlifting seems to have its its own. It's the math. It's a black box. They do something called dots. I don't even remember what dots stands for. Oh, Everybody, it's dots. It's basically like all of the weight that you lift, but then like your age and your weight is a factor and I don't all this stuff. And it goes in a black box and it spits out rankings. That's the one way that you can compare um, women across ages yeah. and weight classes huh. together. But I don't, but when we got to the thing with the masters now, where they were like averaging points across things, it didn't make any sense to me. Now I'm, I'm also curious and you don't have to answer. I'm kind of throwing it out no, there, okay. but I, you, I'm not, how, sure. I, how long has it been that women have been competing in powerlifting? And if it's a short amount of time, Maybe they haven't figured out the math yet. Yeah, they use the same math for the men too. Oh, okay. So they use the same yeah. exact scoring for yeah. women and men. Same oh, okay. black box okay. for men, okay. same black box for women. Oh, but okay. women have been competing in powerlifting, but like you just wouldn't hear about it. Or like I'm sure if you go back and watch like film from old powerlifting meets, like the elite kind, like yeah. the big national or international meets, there would be some women there, but not really. Okay. And it okay. would probably only be like the super heavyweights who were big right, enough to right. like lift like men. Man weight, man weight. Man I'm gonna weight. register that trademark. <laughs> man weight. Um, I don't know, but you know what? I think one reason we we were talking about like being women in sport earlier, yeah. and I neglected to say I think one reason there are a lot more women lifting now is because of CrossFit and oh. the CrossFit Games. You see these super jacked women on TV lifting big weights. Now CrossFit is totally different than powerlifting. Yeah, of course. But to the average person, they see somebody on TV lifting tires a, or and like a barbell with plates on it, yep. you know? So then people are like, Oh, what's this? So there is some powerlifting at CrossFit gyms. They also do Olympic weightlifting at CrossFit gyms. And I'm not a CrossFitter. Never have been probably never will be. It's, I actually think CrossFit I, is I, a good place. For I you hear to get it's hurt. good for you, but I hear it's also lot, not that good for you. A lot of injuries. Because yeah. That's the biggest thing the, They're They don't everybody, every strength athlete needs an individual program. 
to right, build you, their you, strength. And CrossFit is not that. That's like group exercising with weights where they're, and they're, the emphasis is on like raising the weight up, like running the weight up, like getting more and more. Yeah, do it faster, faster. Faster, more reps, Which more hurts you. weight. Yep. That's, I know people who have had surgery because from like knee surgery, back surgery, from injuries, they got doing CrossFit. Because gotcha. CrossFit, they don't care about if you're doing a good job. They just want more reps. More reps, more, more weight. More weight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think people saw CrossFit games on TV and there's all these very attractive women, you know, throw, throwing barbells over their head. <laughs> and they're like, oh, let's go check this out, you know? Oh, okay. So all of a sudden there are a lot more people lifting. Huh. That's very interesting. Yeah. All of this has been. Um, uh, uh, but I also do want to mention real quick before we get out of here is that you did mention that, you know, you're never too old to start oh, something new. No way. This is something that I've said in past podcasts. Yes. And when you said it, I was like, this is a great uh, uh, place to kind of wrap it up because it, it's it's 100 percent true, that statement. Yeah. You if you doesn't matter how old you are. I don't know if you remember. It was about a year and a half, uh, almost two years ago. Mm-hmm. A ninety-eight year old woman was powerlifting, and she made the news. Really? And 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 good it for was, her. She's probably stronger than I am too. It, but <laughs> to see to see her powerlifting and to see how old she was and what or she was ninety. I think okay. she was ninety Either when way. she started. Like a lot of people don't but, even live that long, let alone right. Lift. That long. But the thing is, is that look at this 90 year old doing it just started. And that just goes to show you, it doesn't matter where you are in your life. If there's something that you want to do, just the do best thing to do is just do it. Do it. If you want a podcast, just how do yes. I get it started? It's very simple. You get a microphone, you get an iPhone and start talking into do it. it. That's all you have to do. People want to know, how, do you, how did you get the brown belt? You just go to jujitsu oh class gosh. every day. Just keep going. Co- comedians always say this. How do I get become a comedian? Get the fuck up on stage. The more you do, if you just get up and do, the easier it's going to mm-hmm. be and the closer you'll be getting yeah. to your goal. So I agree 100% in that statement that you are never, ever too old to start something. And if you want to do it, start it now. I started jujitsu when I was 37. 37. Wow. I started powerlifting competitively when I was 37. Oh, okay. So that seems to be that so was that you I, know, I'm I, going I, through this divorce. We're doing this shit, you yeah. know? I quit drinking at 37. There you go. Seems to be a good age to do things. Hey, 37. For anybody who's about <laughs> to have your 37th birthday, get ready. Yeah, but get yeah, ready. I do just, something. I feel like I don't know. And a, I think with powerlifting, it you will, everybody is weak when they start Yeah, and you have to learn the technique. This is true about strength training in general or jujitsu. Like I was so bad at jujitsu. Now I'm okay. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> I got my blue belt. I'm okay. Yeah, but, yeah. um, you know, I was like really weak when I started lifting. And actually the reason I started lifting in the first place is that a trainer at the gym was like, go over there and do X, Y, Z on, on the bench press. And I was like, I can't do that. And they're like, yeah, you can come on, show me. And I was like, <laughs> like I couldn't and they're like oh well you have something to work on and yeah. I was like you know what you're right I do have something to work on and now look what you're doing all the time I said new PR on my bench yesterday See? and granted my bench is still very very weak and poor but I personally had a record on my bench yesterday at my powerlifting meeting. that's awesome thank you yeah I I, I am so uh you are inspiring. Me? I, yes, no. yes, you no. are. You're, no. you're, you're doing the powerlifting. You, uh, 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 you went through that divorce. You have your your own place. You still have a career. You're raising two kids. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing and inspiring. Thank you. Um, don't let anybody take that away from my you. mother. <laughs> but, are you gonna keep doing this <laughs> <laughs> yes the yes, answer yes. is yes yes i am because, do not discourage me because if it, i believe that if it's keeping your mental health yeah. good then it's good for you yes. keep doing it and i mean physically it's great for you but yeah. anything like doing a podcast might not be great physically but mentally emotionally that's yeah. so important yeah I, I i i absolutely am so uh blessed to uh uh have this opportunity um, and I'm just so thankful that you came on the oh, podcast today. You. I really appreciate it. And this was my idea. I told Topher <laughs> to have me on cause I like to talk. No. <laughs> it was a great idea. It was a great conversation. 
Um, but with all that said, I hope everybody out there enjoys the rest of your Thursday. Enjoy your weekend. And as always, I will talk to you later. Thank <laughs> you.